you'll all get a little notification saying, yep, yeah, you're happy with that. And then I'm gonna just share my screen. Stop. That's the one. And bob this up. It's where the internet dies. Uh, Jolene, can you still hear me? Yep. Good, 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 good. Right, good evening, guys. Um, welcome to Man Trailing webinar on trailing with Spaniels. Thanks very much for joining us live. Um, you've got me and Jolene Carter on tonight, and we've got special guest Kath Monzel as well. And um, what I'm going to do is do the welcome of me and Jolene, a little bit of talk about terminology, and then we'll do a little bit of explaining, and then Kath's going to join in and explain um, her knowledge on Spaniels and go from there, and then we're going to do man trailing with spaniels and go from there so there's, there's a little bit of sections to it which is why i've asked if you're going to do questions just make sure that you try and ask them when it's relevant if you've got a burning question it's not relevant at the time just keep it to the end and we'll do um q a um i'm gonna go with um welcome from me and jolene um first thing i'm gonna say is um well actually no i'm gonna i'm gonna change the order on that one we'll do hi me and jolene and then we'll explain the man trailing that we do so um, I'll start first because my name's first and I'm Gobby. Um, <laughs> my name's Catherine Jones. Um, I'm one of the head instructors for Man Trailing Global. Um, I've been instructing now for we've lost you a little bit. Catherine, Springer, then bred a Springer for oh. man trailing, and then got a mounting hound puppy for man trailing, and now I live and breathe man trailing. So um, my life has now been taken over by man trailing. <laughs> we, um, your internet dropped out, Catherine. Oh, nuts. What did we you literally got Bravaria mountain hound. Is that it? Nothing else? Yep. Yeah. Right. Hold on. Let me, let me escape this. Let me stop sharing for a second. Sorry guys, the internet here is awful. So hopefully it'll be a bit slower, but we'll, I'll go through the us anyway. I'm Catherine Jones. I'm one of the head instructors for Man Trailing UK, now global. Um, I've been trailing for three and a half years with my Spaniel. Um, and then um, I've also bred a Spaniel for Man Trailing. And then I've just got a Bavarian mountain hound puppy for Man Trailing. So I decided to go in full throttle. Um, with let's get as many dogs man trailing as humanly possible. Um, I my background is I was very behaviorist for the past ten years, specialising in aggression and uh, guardian breeds. I am a qualified in security dog instructor. I used to train drugs dogs and private security dogs for the private security sector in the UK, um, and I used to puppy select for working roles. So I've got a background in spaniels. Absolutely, spaniels are my life um i've still got two and i'll probably always have um springers i have I, I prefer springers over cockers it's just a personal preference i might get a smack off someone for that one but um i love my springers um and i've got a couple of german shepherds and the hound puppy <clears throat> so anyway um i met jolene through man trailing and now we're addicts together <clears throat> but i'll put you up to jolene hi everybody um i hope you can hear us i don't know if anyone's in the chat could just give us a thumbs up or something so that you can know that you can hear us now well hopefully because i've just been chatting yeah at least 10 minutes on my own then. i know yeah just make sure um so i'm jolene i basically started um as just a, a pet dog owner that got into man trailing and probably about four years ago now but i started off with german shepherds so um, I have now got a Springer and a Sprocker um, and it was like coming over to the dark side. Um, so I learned a lot very quickly um, and it was a very steep learning curve. Um, I've been a dog walker and run a pet care company for the last 16 years. So that was my original sort of background and I've done a lot of sort of just pet dog training and things like that really, but man training really sort of spoke to me from the German Shepherd side that they, they love using their nose um, and it was something that really benefited my dogs living in central Birmingham at the time um, there wasn't much you could do um, 
that was getting you outdoors, that didn't include the normal everyday run of the mill church hall obedience stuff, which my dogs just looked at me and they did, but they didn't enjoy it. So that's why I started into man trailing and said work. Um, and my spaniels, um, I'm not sure I would have made the leap if I was given the opportunity again. Um, but I suppose they make me a better trainer and instructor. Um, it's for me, it's been really hard work going from my steady, um, my steady, ever ready, easy to read German Shepherd to my crazy, mad, highly distracted, kittery, crittering spaniel. And now my Sprocker is a completely different kettle of fish again. So I'm just like that. Oh my God, why am I doing this? <laughs> Um, but that's me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jolie has got two awesome dogs. They're proper cool man trailers. Um, we will kind of preface this by saying we're both man trailing global instructors, and what we do is sports. So we might have backgrounds that complement that operationally or otherwise, but we are going to talk about spot, sport dogs tonight. And when we talk about things and we discuss things, we come from a background of it being sports. I know there's probably quite a few in here tonight that are operational backgrounds or have doing that kind of thing. What we are going to do is comment. If you ask a question that kind of like, oh, it's an operational, we're not going to answer that. We haven't got the skill set. It's it's It might be similar information, but it's not the same. And what I would never want to do is say, yeah, yeah, do this and that impact a working dog. Um, so that's just a preface of it. We are sports dog trainers here in the UK. Um, and our knowledge on spaniels is based on our dogs and what we've seen with our clients. When, you, when you're a shoulder over here, you attract what you've got. If you've got spaniels, you attract spaniels. If you've got shepherds, you attract shepherds. And you get clients with all the same problems that you're having and you go, God damn it, I need to solve this. Um, I can't just wander around hoping for the best. Um, and what we do is we don't find lost people. We find hidden people when we're talking about sports. We're never going to be the person's never missing the person is always somewhere either we know exactly where they are or if we're doing some trailing where the person's decided to walk off they're in a, a certain area so at no point when we're trailing is anybody's life in danger um, and that's where we, we differ from the operational side um so i just want to make sure that that's clear with everybody before we go any further because it's it's uh, it does complicate each other but it's when i'm not going to go around telling people what to do um and also like to kind of just dabble in the terminology before we start because i understand that what we do with demand training global is different to what other people might do within other sports organizations operational organizations um so terminology we might use if we use the terminology blue line trailing it means a known trail to the handler and the instructor it's everybody knows where it is obviously apart from the dog um the dog never knows where it's going unless it's watched the person hide the whole way um, a single blind is where the instructor and the trail layer knows the trail is, but the handler does not. A double blind is where only the trail layer knows where the trail is. You may also hear me interchange trail layer and MISPA. Uh, MISPA is just short for missing person, um, but I don't notice I'm doing it and it does confuse some people when I go, um, yeah, the, the MISPA, the, what's the MISPA? Um, so yeah, trail layer and MISPA are the same thing. Um, hunting trails is a series of short trails where the dogs really fired up and we just do little quick short finds to help with drive you'll probably hear us speak about that so hunting trails are short trails when we talk about an intensity start it's where the dog is fired up to begin the trail given lots of like encouragement to follow the person lots of excitement uh, which is usually the start of any kind of journey with a man trailing dog within man trailing global as a sport a delayed start is where the dog sees the person go before they do the ritual, before they put the harness and get ready. Um, and that's what we use within Man Training Global. And a scent article start is um, the, the dog doesn't see anybody go. There's no fire up. They're just presented with a scent article. Um, and then after every trail we do, we do an intensity trail. After, we, after every tra trail, no matter how short or long it is, we do an intensity trail afterwards as um, a key reward for the dogs. So if you'll hear us mention these things like intensity trails like that. If you're not sure to go along, just ask, just say, Cassie, what are you on about? Just type it in the chat or just pipe up. Um, but we, I don't notice, I'm just using those terms and it wasn't until it was pointed out to me the other night. Someone went, oh, the minute, I don't know what you're on about, Catherine. You're saying it as if I know and I don't know. <laughs> so I'm just trying to make sure, because we've got different people from a lot of different walks of life, make sure that um, we aren't confusing the crap out of you. Because I'm very good at doing that. Super. 
So, sorry, hogging the limelight here a little bit. <laughs> right, let me try and get screen sharing up again. If you lose me, Jolene, you'll have to... Um, I'll have to wing it. You have to wing it, just keep talking. Super. So, the Spaniel breed. Um, I don't know if you want to start with this, Jolene. Should we start with this? You can go with this one. I throw it in the deep end. <laughs> um, so we all we all know what a spaniel is. It's usually a small to medium dog, high on life, crack cocaine and LSD won't slow them down. Um, and they're usually like called mental. Oh, you've got a springer spaniel. My goodness, why would you get a springer? Or oh, you've got a cocker. Oh, they never come back, cocker spaniels. And they're usually shown in quite a negative light when people mention them, unless you're spaniel fan athletics like we are. They are obviously bred, literally have a job. Every dog, you know, genetically has had a job to do. And these guys are flushing and sometimes retrieving dogs. Um, they're now pushed into more detection roles. Um, within the UK and a lot of times in Europe and, and actually in other countries now and there are two versions and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. When we think about the Spaniel what they're bred to do they're not bred like a guardian breed is, or a hunting breed or even a, a livestock guardian breed which would go A to B so they'll find the scent and follow the scent to the end. You, you'll see dogs do it you know a terrier will flush something and follow the scent on the ground or you'll see them do more A to B. A spaniel goes A to Z and checks every letter of the alphabet en route. Um, and that's the way they're designed to do. They're designed to visually see a bird being shot and go, yeah, there's a bird there. Right, I'm gonna go and retrieve that. There's no scent A to B at that point. There is a visual and then they've got to work in on the scent. So when we describe spaniels and what they're bred to do, they have a bred to go and retrieve that bird but it's visual followed by finding the scent and going into source, which would make some excellent detection dogs, because that's the skill of a detection dog, is to find the edge of the scent and go into source. Or they were used as flushing dogs, which meant they run as manically as possible within a certain area, within a certain distance. They're quite good at distances. Um, and then to keep going manically until that thing flushes up. Once that thing flushes up, they go, yes, job well done, amazing. I now find the next thing. So they're very good at switching to the next thing. I've done this thing, switch, I've done this thing, switch, I've done this thing, switch. And they're like little adrenaline junkies. Um, and that's what they want is the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing all the time. Um, the, the bread did not give a shit, to be honest. Um, <laughs> they just drag you through the undergrowth and it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter at all to them. They will just keep working. They'll get stuck halfway in a hedge. They don't care. So they're very, very tenacious breed um, and very keen. Now, this is a positive for some parts of man trailing and it's a negative for other parts of man trailing. So it, it's it's working between the two. Um, Jolene, I don't know if you want to talk about the difference between show and working Spaniels. Uh, no, you can do that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make you do the next slide. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, next slide is class, so you'll do the one afterwards. Um, I have to be honest, I don't have a lot of knowledge with um, show type spaniels. So, my guys that I deal a lot with are either high drive working spaniels or the pet dogs that people get, and they seem to get those one in a million that's absolutely fine just sort of milling about in life. So, I seem to deal with a lot of the two ends of the different spectrum. Um, so, I'll let you do that one. Not all spaniels are crazy. So when we talk about kind of show versus working, so we have a lot of breeds who have the distinction between show and working, and the working breeds tend to be compact, sharp, to the point, fast on it, and what deemed more intelligent. They're not more intelligent. I don't think any necessarily most dogs are any intelligent other dog. Um, they're just more focused at their task and they're more handle orientated. Whereas show spaniels in both the spring and cocker versions are just as intelligent they just don't really want to use their brain to please you they go yeah 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 i've seen that um i i know what i want to do i'm going to do this thing i'm not really interested in you so the show ones tend to be deemed less drivey or not as smart but there isn't really a lot of difference what the difference you've got to do is it build the motivation of show so a show type is generally seen as a lower drive dog and less manic and a working type is more manic what tends to happen is people go oh i don't want a couch potato um and I'm going to get a working type spaniel, not really understanding what that means. 
and proper working type dogs like dogs that were bred to flush or field trial champion these dogs that are, are bred over time to be the best of the best do not cope sitting on a sofa being bored they have to do something and that's why we get a lot in man trailing because it's a great sport that's on lead at all times and it's also a great way to work together the problem is it creates a lot of conflict between the handler and the dog because the spaniel wants to do it at 2000 miles per hour without a line on it and the handler's desperately trying to cling on pure death um to actually watch their dog when they get to the trail and they go that was an amazing trail but i had no idea what my dog did on that trail i just held on for grim death so you can get a lot of conflict because the handler just doesn't understand the dog and the dog just doesn't want the handler to be involved um so what i find with spaniels is a lot of conflict with that and you get that more in the working than the show ones the show version tend to go I found the person, what's the point? Can we go and sit on the sofa? I've got other things to do. I've got to speak to Larry over the fence. They're a bit more whatever. When we also talk well, about the crosses, go for it. Sorry, well, they're just a little bit more amenable, I would say, is yes, that they're yeah, very yeah. into wanting to please their owner. So you'll yeah. find a lot with sort of the pet dogs or the show types that we're talking about. They'll be happy to come and they'll they'll be really happy and they'll do it, but they won't maybe do it at the same gusto or at the same speed that a high drive working dog would, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you're they're the the they're a bit just a bit more amenable and a bit more clued up and sort of maybe used to their owners sort of telling them what to do or instructing or giving them a cue because that's more like how they've been brought up um i don't think we're talking about the show dogs that go into the ring it's sort of the just the various in types isn't it really yeah definitely and then when we talk about spaniel tonight we talk about the crosses and other gun dogs so you'll see so jolene's got a sprocker which is a spring across it's a working spring across a working cocker spaniel um you've got springer doors which are springer spaniels across labradors usually both working types cockapoos which can be either type of spaniel the the show or the working and it can be um with the, obviously the cocker spaniel but cross with a poodle now obviously poodles are gun dogs as well they're just a different kind of jobby gun dog they're still retrieving dog but they're bred slightly different hush puppies which i've worked with a few times which are cocker spaniels cross um they cross beagles or basset hounds they're called hush puppies um why you do that god knows why but people do it um, <laughs> if someone has a hush puppy on this i'm sorry um i just think it's an, it's a hard work cross for anybody let's add more stubborn and drive let's make it harder work um sprudel which is a spring across poodle and um, they're getting quite popular now um and then you've got to think about their cousins so if you have anything to do with gun dogs you've got the curly coat retriever you've got the portuguese water dog the spanish water dog uh, you've got the french water dog with barbe you've got these other breeds that are spaniels that were developed in a different way so if you think about like lots of animals lots of lots of lots of breeds will have variations that were bred in certain areas that genetically were slightly different. So like you've got German shepherds and Belgian shepherds bred for similar tasks, but different ways. The Belgian shepherds and Dutch herders bred for similar tasks in different countries. So even though Spaniels are very popular here in the UK, their cousins, the, the curly coat with breeds, your Bracco, the Spanonis, Labradors, anything that's a gun dog breed, flat coats, golden retrievers, um, will trail in similar ways to spaniel spaniels just tend to be a little bit harder to work with because they just don't always care about the handler and they tend to do it at four thousand miles per hour they get fast these spaniels um so they they can tend to be the hard but they are also by proxy the most popular because they're seen as a really good pet breed here in the uk which i would argue they're really not um not for the faint of heart anyway so but at the end of the day they were all bred to hunt or retrieve prey. So whatever they're bred to do, they're bred to use their nose in order to either flush the prey or find the prey that's been shot and bring it back. Um, so they're bred to use their nose, but not for an, not an A to B. The main thing you've got to remember with these gunner breeds is they're, they are not an A to B breed, they're an A to Z, and they will use all the letters on the way. That's the best way to describe them differently. And I call German Shepherds and anything like Terriers, pointy like pointy anything that should have pointy ears like the pointy ear problem they they're very a to b and they work on the trail quite precisely whereas spaniels launch themselves all over the trail and um, i'm going to introduce kath in a minute and she's got a um absolutely brilliant um image to go with her which it just kind of sums them up beautifully so i'm gonna introduce you guys oh, to kath can i just 
Oh. Add two seconds, sorry, just before no, no, no. we go forward. So when we were talking about the Spaniels going A to Z, A to Z, what they're what they're going to be doing is they're going to be looking for any sort source of scent that they're going after. So it's not going to be I'm going after the green partridge that went to the left. They're going after whatever the freshest partridge is, or duck, or whatever it is they go after, um, or whatever there is on a shoot, or critter, squirrel in my case, rats. They're going for whatever scent of a rat it is. So that's why you often struggle when you're in sort of high areas with them because they're, they're bred to switch to find the prey. Um, and they're, they've, they're meant to do it as easy as possible. Now that isn't always gonna be targeting onto say the green partridge, like I said, um, it's gonna be, they're gonna keep switching to the freshest scent. Um, and that's why you can sometimes also have issues with them in man trailing and, tr and not issues, but just trouble um, with them in man trailing. I think, is Jenny put a hand up? She's got a question. You are charge that bit because I can't see it. <laughs> Wait, what's growling going on? Okay. Puppy, don't annoy the shepherd. I've got no video, Jenny. Have you got a question? Or is it just a hand? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> Has anybody got any questions before we go any further? Whistle stop tour of Spaniels. Right. Super. I'm going to go on to introduce uh, Kath. So, Kath, if you'd like to unmute yourself and introduce you and the misunderstood spaniel please okay so i'm unmuted is everybody able to hear me all right I can thumbs up you. if you can yeah yeah brilliant okay firstly thank you for letting me speak on my favorite subject <laughs> being spaniels um a little bit about me i've been man trailing now for about three and a half years and i've been an instructor on and off due to the pandemic for just over two years um, I've got two working cockers. Uh, my eldest is Sky, um, who is now 11 years old, and I can't imagine life without her, but it was not always that way. Um, I got her at six months of age. That's her age, not mine. Um, she was my first ever dog, uh, pet dog, and I live in the Lake District, and I'd visualised getting myself a dog walking on the fells with my dog, running along by my side, taking in all the scenery and getting lots of fresh air and exercise. Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, yeah, Sky is a very driven working line spaniel. And I came very close to rehoming her um, on a number of occasions. Um, some words to describe her when I got her, she's fearless. Um, basically, yeah, that breeding that you've already mentioned, she's bred to, to thrash her way through the undergrowth, leap over fences and walls, barbed wire wouldn't stop her, um, and she'd chase basically whatever she could find. I also knew she was intelligent, um, fast, but it was that born hunter with that high prey, prey drive and a superior nose <laughs> that was um, a complete shock to me. So our walks were very stressful and they were very lonely. Uh, whenever I let her off, um, if we went to the beach, she'd be a speck in the distance chasing seagulls. Uh, if we went on the fells, she'd be chasing pheasants. And if we went in the woods, she was thrashing through the undergrowth. I didn't see her. And basically, I was not part of the equation. Um, so it was challenging, to say the least. Um, I know now that my major problem was that knowing no better I allowed her to to free hunt uh, and she would hunt to oblivion and it's addictive and she didn't need me um, so what I did basically I knew she was intelligent I knew I didn't know anything about dogs or spaniels so I went out and got myself some training so we did gun dog skills training we did agility. That was our saving grace. Um, we, 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 we bonded and started to develop a connection. But if man trailing had been around in those days, that would have been, I reckon, the best for the pair of us, because she would have had an outlet for that using her nose, finding the prey and being rewarded at the end. Um, 
but she wouldn't have been able to do that on her own. We would have done that together and she wouldn't have been able to self-reward. And um, there's a saying in the gundog world, which is um, those that hunt together, stay together. And I do think that is very, very true. Whether you're gundog working or, or man trailing is just the same. Do those things together and you can build up that relationship and connectivity. Um, so uh, when I was asked to give a little talk about something about Spaniels, I thought, yeah, it's this business of Spaniels being misunderstood. Um, when people who've never had a dog before um, think of getting a dog, they look at Spaniels, they're rather cute looking, or maybe I'm biased, um, but they're small and people think, oh, they'll fit in with my lifestyle. They may even have read a book about them. There's actually um, a book called um, Max the Miracle Dog. Don't know if ever you, any of you have ever read it. The ones with Springers probably have, um, but he's brilliant. He's, he's not like a working line dog, um, but people who've read about them think, oh yeah, you know, I could have one of them, that'd be great. But then you also get people who've um, had other breeds of dogs in their life and then they change to a Spaniel and um, they then get the shock of their life. Um, so if you just want to show that next slide, actually, if you can, Catherine. Um, I've actually come across. Um, oh, I don't know if you, have you got the picture there or not. Which picture? If you left off. <laughs> oh, yeah. OK, brilliant. Yeah. So I absolutely love this picture because it sums up the difference between um, labs in particular and uh, spaniels so i've actually come across people who've had ab labs all their life and then as they get older they think okay well we need a smaller dog it'll fit into the house fit into the car better it's not as strong they don't know spaniels spaniels are strong um so they get themselves a spaniel and then again they have the shock of their life um those pictures there you can see the top picture walking with labs labs are all circling their owners obviously this is a general view not all labs are like that but in general um they stick along with their owners and then we've got the same picture underneath and the spaniel's nowhere to be seen <laughs> um i also came across um a phrase as well when I just got Sky, that Labradors are born half trained and Spaniels die half trained, which again, there's an element of truth in that because Spaniels just kind of live in their own world and do what they like, um, but you can train them a little bit. So common traits of Spaniels that I think people are unaware of when they get them is they can actually be quite big resource guarders, uh, whether that be guarding food, toys, or people. Um, they want to carry things, that's what they're bred for, to carry things. And if people take those things that they're carrying off them all the time, they can actually start to guard them. And um, I don't know if Lynn is listening in. I know Lynn's got a couple of Spaniels herself and she does a lot for Spaniel aid, rescue dogs. Um, you do get a lot of this happening. Um, when you know sort of you've got your spaniels in your home and you've got little kids and the little kids are taking things off these dogs all the time um and then you can get resource guarding and you get all kinds of problems then with with the with the family um so the best way to avoid resource gardening guarding is not to take the items off the dogs but praise them for having brought it to them uh, fuss them when they get to you, take it off them if they give it to you and then give it back. So, you know, you, you can resolve it, but um, it is it is a problem with resource guarding. The other thing is OCD behaviour. A lot of Spaniels end up spinning, tail chasing, shadow chasing, and they can get quite frustrated with things as well, uh, vocalising and mouthing. Um, so they are very trainable. Uh, but they do get distracted and they have their own agenda. <laughs> uh, I do say they're very focused, but not necessarily focus on what you want them to do. And I think Jane, Jane Dalton, you're probably listening. And I know we've done a lot of training together and you in the early days certainly used to say, say oh, you know, I think I think I think Sky's lost focus. And it wasn't a case of that she'd lost focus. I reckoned it was just she'd switched focus to something that she just found more interesting than I wanted her to. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see the chat but Lynn oh, says that she's here and she agrees 100% and then Jane says yes oh okay yeah no um, I'm not very good at un un unlike a spaniel I'm not particularly good at multitasking <laughs> oh, uh, yeah but yeah cheers for your comments on that 
Uh, OK, so the other thing about Spaniels being mis misunderstood, uh, they're often referred to as crazy, crazy Spaniel. And I thought, oh, what does crazy actually mean? So I looked it up in the dictionary uh, and it says if you describe someone or something as crazy, there's a couple of definitions, you think they're very foolish or strange. Oh, they're a bit crazy. Um, someone who's crazy can also be classed as insane, which I don't think they are. But they also, the dictionary mentions about if you are, you can be crazy about something and it, that means you're very enthusiastic. So I would say I'm crazy about Spaniels. I'm very enthusiastic about Spaniels. Um, and I would describe Spaniels as crazy about um, <laughs> birds, pheasants, rabbits, and man trailing as well. They do like, they, you know, they can be crazy about the man trailing. They know what we're doing. They want to go and find that person and get their reward. Um, so having said that, the definitions of crazy, uh, not being insane, um, you would do find that, you know, if you ever hear on the news that um, a dog has jumped off a cliff into the water, most of most times these dogs are spaniels. <laughs> and I would say, pardon? It's probably, probably one of mine. <laughs> yeah, they're the ones who are sort of, you know, chasing after a bird and just throw themselves over the cliff. So you could say that's plain crazy, i.e. insane. Um, so when spaniels are trailing, they can appear out of control and unfocused. So I think this as well is a misconception. And Jane, again, I'm going to mention this. And I know a few of you have probably seen this video that I've put up sometimes on the Guild. And we call it the Benny Hill Trail. Uh, this was a trail that I did with Jane, uh, with my younger cocker, um, Luna. And it's called the Benny Hill Trail because it was so hilarious when you watched it back. We speeded it up and we put it to the tune of Benny Hill, which was Jane's suggestion, which was superb. But I'm not going to show it, but I'm just going to explain what it was. Um, it was in a semi-urban environment, in the village where I live, here in the lakes. Um, and Luna basically took scent and then she shot off in the opposite direction to which the person had gone but unbeknown to me because it was blind so she shot off in the opposite direction and there was a little playground so she whizzes underneath the slide and I'm sort of trying to do my sort of you know line handling she whizzes under the slide a few times then she comes back to the scent article she goes over the scent article almost jumps off the wall onto the road but I managed to stop her she gets on the wall she, sorry on the road she circles round a couple of times then she goes across um, an opening, circle uh, field opening, circles around that a couple of times, circles around a fence post a couple of times. <laughs> then she goes across a little bridge and then she finds um, a little area where they were growing some grass with fresh seed that had these traffic cones and um, cordoned mm -hmm. off. Well, she goes around the traffic cones, then she disappears under um, a massive bush. And then one of Jane's clients, um, who also has dogs but never used spaniels before, says to Jane, "Ooh, when do you think Luna will be able to concentrate on the on the trail and start and start actually trailing?" I can't remember what it was, Jane, but it was something along those lines that she just thought Luna was off on one. But Luna most definitely wasn't because she was just that's the way that she worked. <laughs> so people, yeah, shall, I, shall I chip in, Kath? Just yeah, yeah, briefly. please do, please um, do. Yeah, this is a lovely client of mine. And uh, and I must, I, I just need to add, Kath, and remember yep. when you first came trailing and you hated it because it was madness. And oh, then yeah. she came back and she got hooked. So yeah. I was pretty relieved. But yeah, it was, it was just, such, it was a brilliant, brilliant trail, but Luna was all over the place. And this client has got a completely nutty but brilliant border collie, absolutely brilliant. Um, but it's one of the nuttiest border collars you could meet. So she's used to nutty dogs. And she watched Luna and she was like, oh, well, um, you know, when will she kind of, it was almost like, when will she get the game and, and focus and calm down? And I went, this is Luna at her best. <laughs> yeah. and she looked at me and went, oh. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I would be looking yeah. to get that, one of those then when she retires. So <laughs> <laughs> She could cope with one, actually. But uh, yeah, I think it was just the expectation that one day they'll grow up and, go in more of a straight line which some of them do don't they some yeah. of them really do yeah, um, yeah. not Luna not Luna yeah no no and both both of mine are, are like the working line so you do get kind of that extreme really um so 
so yeah um so rather than describing them as crazy or out of control and unfocused i rather use the words they're enthusiastic they're fast and i would say they're fast physically and also mentally they're quick thinkers they make quick decisions um they're inquisitive they're joyous thorough because they'll check and double check places for scent so they'll circle around a few times and then make a decision on which direction to go in they're multitaskers so luna very often will suddenly be she'll be trailing and then suddenly she's under a bush and then she's out of a bush because she's flushed the flushed the bird and then she's back on the trail um but they're also intelligent that is last but nine no me uh warwich has said um yep yeah, i get owners at classes with spaniels as family pets that take things off them i always remind them that that they've been bred to do and to swap drop etc yeah um, and let them carry on um teach them a drop etc or just get them to carry something um Susan Davies, I've been surprised to find resource guarding of rewards or me while working or resource guarding my lap or a comfy space um, of any area of food. Yes. Jane said that Luna excels at multitasking, Sky, ex Sky excels at being unpredictable. Your girls taught us both a lot about how to read spaniels. Yep, they did indeed. And continue to. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Jules said, we record dead marine animals that turn up on the beach. Briar resource guards these animals and keeps them, keeps the other dogs away. Oh, that's an interesting one. Oh, gosh, right. And I, that, that's it now. It's right, if we'd gone too far over, it wouldn't have made any sense to... Yeah, it starts getting a bit confused. That's why we're trying to keep the questions together. Thank you very much. Yeah, Kathy. okay. Really People, yeah huh? thanks for thanks for giving me the opportunity to uh to tell my story <laughs> super thank you right we're gonna crack on now guys because we've been on here a while and we want to get some more knowledge in you so when me and jolene decided to do this we really wanted to break down what spaniel owners or people working with spaniel owners are going to experience so we've broken it down into the start middle and the end of a trail um and we're going to start with kind of obviously the start and talking about the scent inventory and the ritual and those kind of beginning bits. Um, Jolene, I don't know if you want to actually jump in and have a little bit of chat about the ritual we use and the issues that you can get with spaniels at this start, because I know that um, you've obviously had two different lights with your guys. A river's a really good example at the beginning. Yeah, so, so when we're talking about it, obviously we're doing man trailing global stuff. And at the start of our trails, we do a scent inventory. So it's where we take the dogs out and we get them to just take in the area and the natural sort of scents that are going to be around at that time. Um, with this scent inventory, we sort of often do a circle, a circular motion, um, whatever we can really just to take, give the dogs the opportunity to wind down in the area. Like I said, take the scents that are in the area um, before we look to start them off to do their job. Um, what we what what is often quite interesting is when you take a spaniel out to do this, and especially if they already know the game, um, how they act when they come out. Um, if they're over, overly excited, you might just get a lot of excitement and you might not look, not get a lot of information. So for us, when we're doing a scent inventory, we want them to take in the natural sort of scents that are there. And what we're intending for them to do is when they're set about their task, their harness and lines being put on, they take the scent of the, the person they're going to find. They then need to discriminate about where that is within the area to go forward and tell us the direction of travel that that's gonna be at. Um, Catherine's captain, he gives a really clear direction of travel. Um, I like to think of it as a sort of clock face. I walk around a clock face um, and my dog's going to give me an exit figure. So if I put my kit down at six, I'm going to walk around, give my dog the opportunity to tell me. My dog will tell me whether there's one or two different types of scents there. Often if there's contamination, she can indicate on a couple of different forms of human scent. And then once she's brought in to take the scent of the person she's actually going for, the specific person, she will then look at the direction that that scent goes in. Um, obviously, these are the dogs that 
aren't just starting to learn the game. They're the ones that sort of understand the game and are going to go forward. What you should often find in that period, that ritual, is either overexcitement because they know what's coming, that or there's something massively distracting in the area. So my river is absolutely terrible in any kind of woods because there's always going to be something else that she could multitask on. Um, and I will always know as soon as I bring her out to do that scent inventory, how well a trail could potentially go um, as to how distracted she is within that area. Um, once you then go on, the ritual is sort of, it's just literally a walk round and you're going to get the dog to investigate and like I said, tell you that direction, um, tell you that direction of travel. Um, the crittering is often one that you're going to get with the spaniels. Um, and especially if I use the term self-employed with River, um, my girl is two. I brought her up quite feral, to be fair. She would pretty much go and live off the land. And as much as I do a lot with her, I trained her every day from sort of eight weeks old. We've done a lot with her. I wanted her to be self-sufficient in certain ways. So I've got a really good bond with her, but I could just let her out somewhere and I don't think she'd be too fussed she's got way more better things to to go and find and to flush and to chase and to stalk and and things like that so for her it is very much a game that we have to play together and bond together um we've just had a question from Jonathan how large a circle would you use for a scent inventory um as large as you possibly can it depends on the area that you're going into. It depends on what the setup's going to be. Catherine will probably jump in at any point, but if I'm coming up to an area of, say, somewhere someone's pulled their car over and there's three or four different junctions, I would make sure that my scent inventory goes around those junctions. Um, the one thing I see a lot with clients is that they seem to tiptoe. As soon as the scent article's put down, they kind of tiptoe around the scent article. Um, and the dog just can, they, they don't need to be on the scent to smell it. They can smell it from quite far away. So if you, they then get quite frustrated. So that whole process of getting them harnessed up and things like that can really be um, an issue with them. So make it as big as you can, depending on what area you're in. If we then switch to say urban and it's on a roadside, I probably couldn't do as big a ritual because of just the area that was there i'd only have yeah, pavements, things like that I'll jump in to join you with and um, back up jolene there you the the circle with i got told off calling it a circle now and i have to keep it in my head it's to encompass the exits and the potential directions of travel so that picture there like captain's he you can see he's in a car park there's a guy with the camo trousers we can't on. see the picture i don't know if you've got to press it again what what can you see there you go now we've got it oh awesome. back one um, yeah, so unless my screen must have gone to sleep. Sorry, guys. So you can see That's that it. there's a guy with camo behind and there's a road behind. The scent article can't actually see is to the left hand side by on that red bit there. So what I'm doing with the inventory here before Hans, Captain's Highness up is I'm doing probably my premises. If you don't know how big to do it, you normally use 10 meters of line. Don't use that 10 meters, but walk out eight to 10 meters away from that scent article. If you need a number in your head, that's where you're aiming at. You don't want to be on top of the scent article. You want to be more expanded. And this is really important for Spaniels because if you don't let them check the environment, you don't let them sniff stuff, they're going to do it at the end of that 10 meters of line on the end of the harness and probably take three people out in the process who are watching. Um, so make sure that if you if you need a, like a, I need a number in my head because you're that kind of person, um, it, it doesn't want to be on top of the scent article. Like Jolene said, people seem to tiptoe around it and just do like, a, oh, I've done a circle. It's not a circle. The circle's the best description we can give you visually, but it's also the wrong description because it's about checking all the environment. And it's so important in Spaniels check their environment because they're going to do it anyway. If you don't allow them to do it, they're going to just check everything out on the end of the line. Would you agree with that, Jolene? Um, yeah I definitely agree it's literally the, the, the issue is it's just such a subjective subject because it depends on where your trail starts um we've also had another question that says how to handle over excitement when they know what's coming the dog tries to reverse out of the harness doesn't want to take scent etc doing sniff exercises without trail works fine but as soon as we bring hang on 
As soon as we bring the trowel back in, everything before we allow her to set off is out the window. Again, for that one for me, I would probably just do a, a bigger circle, a bigger ritual around, try and make it so that it's a bit more fluid, um, make it so that you're a bit boring, make sure that the dog doesn't actually see any of the setup. So it doesn't see you handing over the pots. It hasn't seen the person leave because you've got them out of the car um, before you're just ready. I know we want people to be on time and stuff when we're doing training and things. Um, but for me, I would do it so it's just quite low key. And if the dog is really excited, just keep going round. Just keep walking within the area until they've calmed down before you look to start because if you're always starting in that high aroused state, it's not a great mindset for them to think, if that makes sense. And that's not just for man training, it's with anything. If they're in an over aroused state, and let's face it, it's really easy for a Spaniel to get over aroused. Spirit comes, uh, not spirit, um, River comes back um, and her pupils are dilated. They're massive at the end of a trail when she's found somebody and she's so high, I just about get her to take food. Um, and she won't ever play with a toy um, because she's just raised all her hormones too much and all her adrenaline and everything too much. Um, I would look to do a larger ritual, a larger um, scent inventory. Wait till your dog is calm. Maybe take the scent article out of the picture. So to the dog, it's absolutely nothing there. There's no way that they can pre-scent. Um, and I would try doing that and see if that works. Catherine, would you say anything about that? I would that? agree with that and keep circling. If you have to do a big circle and then do like two or three of them, it's okay to do that. What I wouldn't do is be tempted to suddenly drop the ritual out and hope that if you took away some of that excitement that they won't do it what you'll find is if you try and take that ritual away even though it's frustrating to you because it's creating that conflict is the dog just starts picking a direction and isn't thinking if you do a couple of circles it sniffs the environment it bounces around for five minutes he's a pain in the butt spaniel and then you can harness them and get in the room you might find actually pre-harnessing is a little bit better with that dog um i did pre-harness captain for a period of time because when he was about nine months old um i did that much intensity with him he was wild and he would just scream and grab drag the harness um so we started pre-harnessing because it was just easy and trying to tackle him to the ground to put harness on him um but we, what we did is we didn't drop the ritual because i want him to check that environment and what's happened over time and, and with all the spaniels that we've seen trailing together and individually is the the more you put a little bit of sensibleness in the beginning the better trailers they are it can be really tempting to take away oh, that, and you're that. dropping out again oh what did you hear She's not here. We kind of with oh. your hands in the air. Well done. Does it keep dropping my screen sharing? Right, I'm gonna come on to this. It's just occasionally drops your chat. It's it's me. Sorry guys, let me just turn my video off. Super, can you hear me? Right. Super. Um, I've got a couple that, yes, I can hear somebody and I've got a couple that I can't hear each other, me. Okay, let me just get rid of these notifications. Oh, bugger. Oh, oh. um, super. Jolene, I can't hear you at the moment. Oh no, Jolene's frozen. God damn it. Um, um, Am I back? Jolene's frozen my end. Has she gone for everybody, is she? Hi, Catherine, it's Emma. Um, you're fine. I think it's just Jolene that kept freezing. Oh, Emma's now... Uh, sorry, Emma. Jolene's died out. <laughs> Hold on a She's second. Gone, yeah. Get back in. Um, um, Although your picture's gone. I've turned my picture off because it tends to make my okay. a bit better. So I uh, picture's gone intentionally, but... Everything else gone. Let's just see if Jolene jumps back on. Okay. Bear with technical difficulties, guys. Um, super. I'll ask questions as we go along as well. TV finds messing at the start, very frustrating. Um, and uh, oh, it's gone again. Um, headstrong and needs to get on the job. Too much mess and she would end up prepared. To have to be prepared to start so yeah and you have to be prepared if you need a spaniel you need to get the stuff over to people you, they need to have the reward it's not standing there with a the dog going oh yeah i've got my pots all minute i go back again and come backwards and forwards and and messing about it's get out there let them do the inventory 
if you need to pre-harness, pre-harness them and get them done. But this isn't, you know, it works for every dog. Um, we've done it removing the harness, removing the inventory. We've done keeping the inventory. It, it's a lot of it's a bit trial and error, but don't be tempted to change it every session. Go, oh, well, he's not doing it. So I'm going to do this and do this. Like any dog training, if you're going to change something, change it for a period of time, um, for a consistent amount of time, and then um, see what the effects are. If you've got improvement, work with it. If you haven't got improvement, then think about changing it, but you need to do it for a period of time first. Um, I'm hoping Jolene will jump back in. Technology. Um, my oldest cock often gets really annoyed, not overexcited, just annoyed by the inventory, and she's already air said mid decision before we get anywhere near it. Is it better to wait inventory when she's fighting? Only go in one direction. Um, yeah, you've just got a very keen dog. And again, I'd be temp I the problem comes if you drop the inventory when you try and do double blinds or anything that's blind, because you cannot, you don't know. And you'll be surprised how much your cues, your bodily cues, affect the trail. And the second you stand there going, oh, I don't know, the dog sniffs it and goes, oh, I don't, and, and then tries to pull, you'll find that you fall flat on your face because the dog doesn't know. Um, and it always falls apart to double blinds. Um, I speak from experience because I've messed with it. I've, I've done bits and bobs and I've seen it on enough occasions. So yes, it works Some dogs, take it out, that's fine. Um, but other dogs, it doesn't. So just be wary of suddenly going, oh, well, that's the problem. It's not the problem. Your dog's learning the game. They're learning how to do it. Um, so it's one of those things. Um, da -da 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 -da. Um, mine gets annoyed from the ritual, but working from the car, he wants to go along the trail rather than explore other areas. Yeah, some dogs are just more keen on it and that's fine. Um, but again, it will come a cropper when you do more complex trails, it will fall apart. Um, Jolene's Zoom's dropped, so just waiting for her to jump back in. Um, sorry, guys. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's about give and take and adaptation, but if you're going to adapt to anything, please do, um, do it for a period of time, not just change every session. I'm hoping my video will work now. Um, yeah, and pre-harnessing is a good one with Spaniels. I would rather put the harness on the car with them or even at home if they're not going to eat it um, and travel with it on rather than doing it in the rituals. That's becoming a big frustration rather than dropping out the main ritual. Um, uh, Lindsay Taylor's a good one. Finding out, um, ensuring their zoomies are done elsewhere. It does help at the start if your spaniels sometimes have had a good run somewhere, depending on what they've chased on that run. Um, but yeah, just be. <laughs> oh, very good on your Thank you. Sorry, a bit of feedback there. Um, da -da -da. Someone said, I've heard trial dog handlers let them know 45 minutes to get the energy out before they can think straight. Um, yeah. Um, some dogs need a bit of run before doing a task. Some, like, some people with a bit like ADHD kind of behavior isn't that you need to burn some other um, hormones in order to work. That's absolutely fine. Um, Misprint for Spaniels, Kirsty. We'll have to do another weather on that one. Um, um, Cocker still goes on straight ahead, even when walking the circle. Then you need to talk about foundations, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, um, with that Sandra, if he goes in a straight line. Um, Pre-harness go out in the car makes loads of difference at the start. Yeah, it, it can with Spaniels and pre-harnessing could be one of those things that's good. You can pre-line if you need to. I don't want to buy it because it's hard work, but um, you can do different things in order to affect the start. I think one of the main things you've got to think about with Spaniels is, yes, they know what they're doing. Once they get to the game, they know what they're doing and they're going to um, pick a direction, drag you in it. It's a nice, headstrong dog. Great. Work with it. Absolutely love it. What you also don't want to happen is that you end up resenting them because they're keen. Yes, it is difficult to start. I know it's annoying. And you're like, oh, I'm getting dragged around again. Your dog wants to do the job and enjoys doing the job. Don't get resent it because of that. Enjoy it. Love the enthusiasm. Think happy thoughts when you're doing it and don't get frustrated because the more frustrated you get, the more frustrated your dog will get. Um, and they pick up on that early frustration. So I've just turned my um, 
camera off again because I can see the internet's dropping a little bit because I got a bit blurry. Um, so do apologise, it's living in the back at the end of nowhere. Um, so yeah, that's the start of the ritual and bits and bobs. We'll just talk about taking scent. So it's come up a little bit with bits and bobs here when the Spaniel's taking scent. Spaniels can be um, real naughty for presenting the scent article. Now, I know with some methods of man trailing, it's something that we encourage, but what we don't want is presenting in what I'm describing here isn't us offering the scent article and then taking the scent. It's them um, sniffing it for no reason and then trying to shoot off in a direction. So you might find that some of these dogs that are very pushy on the ritual and just want to get going have probably sniffed the scent article. It is worth taking a scent article out of the ritual, having the place down there by the mist when they leave, and then as they're hiding, you pick up the scent article and just take it out of the circle. So you remove some of that visual um, and try and get the dog to focus on just checking out the environment. Part of that can help. So part of removing the scent article can help with that. Um, the other reason removing the scent article is if you've got a dog that's a bit resource guardy and a bit hyper focused it stops them hyper-focusing on that visual of a scent article. I don't see it actually as much in Spaniels, but I see it a lot in golden retrievers and flat coat retrievers. Um, they are very picky uppy dogs and want to carry, and a lot of them will hyper-focus in on the scent article and not do the ritual because they're busy staring at it, trying to pick it up. Um, the, because the Spaniel will often pre-scent it, they'll kind of come sniff it, you'll do the ritual, the dog will try and start, and then you're like, right, take scent, you'll use your sniff command, and the dog will sniff. Oh, Jolene's back. Sorry guys, I don't know what's happened, but my internet's dropped out. So I've had to join you via my phone. Um, so hopefully it'll work. So I'm having technical difficulties, which is why my screen's, are, she's gone again. Oh no, she's back. <sighs> Hang on, can you hear me? I can hear you now, yep. Oh, there we go. Hopefully that's right then. Yeah. I've turned my camera off because my internet keeps going wobbly as well. Um, okay. just answered a few of the questions um, up until um, Rachel's iPhone um, and I just started talking about taking scent um, okay potentially what you said before like removing the scent article the dogs are presenting um, I just got to the point where so the, so it's, it's common and it happened a lot with me with captain was you do you come out and do the ritual dogs sniff the scent article because I wasn't concentrating or because I wasn't doing a big enough scent inventory I wasn't doing a big enough area um, and then what happened was he sniffed this article when we came to start trailing we've done we've got him harnessed and everything i put a line on him i've gone to go sniff a point at the scent article and he's gone yeah whatever let's go i don't, at this point don't know he's taken scent i assume he has because he's like it's that way idiot but i've got no confirmation he has and the times that i've just let him go he has gone off you know and done other jobs and things so it becomes a sniff, sniff, sniff. Oh, you just sniff. And I've seen handlers get quite frustrated by that. So removing that scent article so they can't present it or just being a little bit more ahead of yourself and thinking ahead. Don't get out of the car and hand the pots of something. Oh, I forgot my eyes and I got this and I got that. Get a little bit more prepared and stopping them getting involved with the scent article can make a big difference to that start. Not every dog, it, it, not every spaniel's the same you'll get 15 spaniels will all be different you get 15 springers will all be different um but it can make a difference and and just being more sensible about it um if a so spaniel does down, but spaniels really live in the moment so they don't actually have a lot of impulse control um so outside of man trailing impulse control can be a really good thing so river at the start now she sits and she's actually calm to be harnessed um and everything like that because she knows if she sits she's going to get where she wants to go but it's taken a lot of time outside of an, and away of man trailing in order to get her to do that so when we are discussing man trailing you might be better to do some stuff away from the actual uh, the excitement that the game the day that you're trailing to put that in and focus that into your training to help you go forward if that makes sense So a few questions or a few comments. Uh, Jules has put, if Briar hasn't had, has had a normal exercise in the morning, she doesn't do so well in evening trails. Yeah, not every dog needs a blast on the field. Um, some dogs do, some dogs don't. I don't tend to walk mine before man training because I like the little bit of the chaos. Um, but that's just a personal preference. Record. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Loading, just unmute yourself. Um... 
Julian unmute yourself when she saw it. It's probably because your internet's dropped back on. Um, my spring picks up percent article and carries it a few yards. This is coming from iPhone. Um, and drops it is common. Yes, big common issue in the gun dog breeds. So there are a couple of ways to solve that one. Um, I've popped the scent article into a glass jar. This was actually um, brought to us by another head instructor, Jerry Moss, and I think it's a really good, don't just pick any jar, like a proper Kilner glass jar, um, because it locks the scent in. Pop the scent article in that, shut the lid. When the dog comes to take scent, you just literally open up the scent, the jar. What it does is puffs that um, scent out. Jerry will probably jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, puffs that scent out. Dog can take a good sniff, you can shut it, and the dog can't grab the scent article. Just be cautious using anything with glass, please. Kilner jars are fairly hefty um, and they're fairly heavy duty, but at the end of the day, they are glass. But it helps puff um, the scent um, because when you open it, it goes. Um, you can do the same with plastic bags, but it's just not as effective. I tend to, as instructor, um, grab a scent article. A dog comes to scent, I've got it in my hand. Plastic bag on the outside, just a bit of scent on the opening, and we literally go sniff, dog takes scent, and I take the scent article out of the way before they can grab it. It does take a bit of timing and a bit of effort. And if you have got a dog that snatch grabs, so I know we talk about spaniels, but if you've got like a Malinois that really grabs it, just be cautious to do that kind of thing. But what you want to do is uh, interrupt that behavior rather than allowing it to continue to happen because what tends to happen and I see this a lot in gun dogs and we will talk about conflicting jobs but a conflicting job is if you've got a gun dog trained spaniel when I mean gun dogs I mean gun dog trained um they will go oh um I pick it up and they pick it up and they go right um what am I, uh, who am I retrieving it to it's not you because I need to take it to somebody else and they have a little moment where they go oh I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it and they have a carry on ticket to person or they drop it um I know that there's um, Amy on whose gun dog trained spaniel does this. He used to put this an article up and he'd look at her and go, oh, I don't know if I'm supposed to retrieve it or trail it. And he'd have a little moment where he went, ah, then he'd carry on trailing. Um, um, Jerry's just popped in with the kiln in the jar and it's quite good. The kiln in the jar is a quick fix during training. It's not a replacement. It is to help break your dog the habit, which doesn't explain very well, break the dog habit from picking up the scent article any dog should learn to just sniff it um doing training at home is important if your dog is picking up the scent article all the time um it becomes a choking hazard so we want to get rid of it pretty quickly um also placing the scent article high putting it you know if you've got a, a fabric scent article putting it high or if the dog's at that level using transfer scent can help um reduce dog picking up scent article um that's quite good um do my springer can be so quick on the scent i often miss it and i think he's got it and i go and try to point where he gets frustrated yeah really common um jolie's gone out again i've asked jolie and dance discretion but she's dropped out again um it's a really common thing um for the spaniels to kind of like just run over the scent article um what they're going to do is making mistakes and what you want to do is blue line trailing at that point you don't want to let them go all oh, miles off the trail you need to slow them down at the beginning and bring them back do your big scent inventory get them in get the scent and when you go to set off don't just let them tear ass over the scent article slow them down if you need to just grab from the harness grab the collar and just stop for a second don't get the harness on like let's go 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 go. let's just have a moment to pause and then point out the scent article place the scent article in a novel way so that it's not just on the floor looking oh yeah yeah i've sniffed i've sniffed it move it around so the dog does do it or what we've already talked about take the scent article out of the ritual and then bring it back in in hand or drop it in front of the dog so they go oh the scent article and they actually want to investigate it but again at home training can help um sorry julian you're back again yeah i have to be on my phone guys apologies my internet at home just keeps dropping out which is just very unusual so um i'm back now hopefully i'll be able to see everything um right i've just uh someone having a conversation from the uk i'll be double night from the usa i run a gym white hair point i love a gym white hair point man really um the similitudes are too remarkable yeah they're they're just mad cousins aren't they um <laughs> um crackhead on speed do you pre-harness prior to calls do you have any do you have to try him flush birds i know it's no birds means find the man pretty watch funny to watch him to point way back to work and present the article um oh you do not i thought you asked if i do yeah so 
you will have to, I should imagine, because you've got operational dog by sounds of it. Um, it's, the dog should know the difference. One of the reasons we do the ritual one man trailing is so they know they're man trailing and when they know they're doing other jobs, it's absolutely fine to do other jobs. We do talk a little bit um, at the end about different other jobs that spaniels might do and how that will affect their man trailing. Um, you can get plastic kiln the jars on it, on Amazon Brilliant. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, super, right, let's crack on. Um, do you got anything to add about the start, Jolene? Um, to be perfectly honest, I'm going to leave that with you because mine dropped out, so I'm not sure where you've gone with it. So if we leave that there and because, um, and we'll move on if that's all right. Right, super. Let me just screen share again. We've got my nice PowerPoint time on. So it's that at this point. Right, let's talk about the middle of man trailing the trail so negatives when we talk about negatives um i'm gonna start with negatives jolene and then i'm gonna be casted <laughs> um when we <laughs> talk about negatives we talk about a behavior that says there is no scent there or i'm not going to follow that scent it is not a negative like it's a bad behavior it's a, our perception is a word used to say that their dog is not going to take that trail or is not um taking that scent or the scent isn't there remember we don't know where scent is we actually don't know how dogs perceive scent well we we can't study it in a way properly that we want to so it's all a bit of we assume this is happening and the science is catching up all the time it's amazing um so spaniels generally aren't good at giving negatives they'll tend to carry on two three hundred meters following just on a merry chase or the trail was 300 meters back or the turn usually was 300 meters back and you're busy holding on going yeah well the dogs i think the dog's trailing but i haven't got a clue because absolutely nothing has changed what you need to do with the spinal is teach them to give a negative and by what i mean by doing that is this blue line trailing where everybody knows where the trail is where you know where the turn is and also understanding where the wind is so if you've got a trail and it goes in a straight line and turns right at the end and your wind is coming from the right hand side across to the left what will happen is that dog's more than likely to turn left on that trail it is more than likely i'm gonna just um actually come off screen sharing so i can um i can show you visually what i mean so if you've got a trail that goes this way it's nice and straight and well, i hope this is right for you guys it goes this way so the trail is doing that there but the wind is coming across this way what's going to happen with your spaniel is going to go because they will follow air scent to the edge and then eventually go oh i lost that somewhere uh and then come back in what we want to do when we do man trailing is teach them to go uh that's loads of air scent but the stronger scent's coming this way i'm going to go that way and give a negative and a negative behavior can be one of many different things with spaniels but it tends to be and I, people can tell me if it's wrong um it tends to be a slight head lift a a changing speed that doesn't mean they suddenly stop and slow down i mean literally you go from being dragged to just slightly jogging uh, <laughs> um i just think of a reef um <laughs> that's and, my dog yeah, yeah reef, uh, her sprocker like the, the, the only time he's given a negative really he does tend to turn on the spot but you have to be really quick um and they will maybe give like a head tilt and diff bob they're very subtle to work spaniels they are incredibly subtle and the reason we want to know where that trail is we want to look blue line is so that when they do veer off and they start going we can say right the wind's blown this way and we're likely to get kind of a rough back scent drift you don't know because we're not um puppy can you stop chewing that on the chair so puppy chewing the bone in the chair um we know where it ends so that we can as handlers to some degree influence how the dog works what we're not doing is stopping dead and going oh you can't go down there what we're going to do is slow down and try and watch that dog give a negative and look for that behavior if the dog slows down a little bit or looks right we're going to go yep yeah, that's a negative let's move and try and interpret dog's behavior because that's what we're doing with man training. We're interpreting dog's behavior. Um, so we're trying to give an opportunity that they can communicate to us and that we can learn it. 
spaniels will follow scent miles and miles and miles off a trail if it's a windy day you're done for and you really need to spend time doing those blue line known trails so that you can read your dog as it works and you can know where the trail is and where it isn't you can know where the scent concentration is or isn't so that you can keep working for those different things um but it's um another one is a good trail to do is split starts I've got Jolene on my back. I've been yeah. turned off. Can you hear me? Yeah. Technology. Um, my well, this isn't going well tonight. Sorry, guys. We'll get there. Um, so from the moment you start about split starts, thank you, Logan. So <laughs> split starts are, are two people leaving from the scent article. There's two fresh trails. One is a red trail, one is a decoy. And then split trails are where two people walk out so far and then they split off they don't have to split at the same point but they do they don't follow each other the trail does turn in two different directions or the trail goes one way and the decoy trail goes the other way is a better description and um, those kind of trails mean that you can give exact points where the trail has ended or trail has changed and we can teach them to follow the trail we want or teach them to investigate the other trail and then come back to where they should be we're not going to stop a spaniel doing spaniel things investigation but what we want to do is make sure that they do kind of stick to the trail to some degree. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be, you know, kind of so we can read it. Um, but those can help make the dogs make the right decision on those kind of giving those negatives. But when we mean negatives, we mean behaviour that um, that allows us to interpret that the trail is not there. It's usually things like a head lift, a head turn, a quick, what I call a boomerang turn. The dog goes down and goes, nope. And then suddenly turns on a sixpence, comes right past you and you go, ah, on the long line. And you usually get flipping your shoulders joint, pulled out a joint. Um, Captain My Springer actually does a really cool negative. So he pees, if he pees once, he's just peeing. If he pees twice within a 30 second period, it's a negative. So he'll go so far on the trail, have a pee, have a sniff, go a bit further. If he pees again, he usually goes, yep, yeah, this is not my trail. And he comes back up. And that's something he's developed in the last six months. Um, so that's quite a cool negative he does. Um, Jolene, have you got anything to add to that? Uh, no, I just think Spaniels are really quick to make decisions. So the negatives can often come really quickly because they're in the moment and they're in the movement. They will keep going, like you've said. So for a spaniel, it could just be a head flick, like you've mentioned. Um, and for the handler, you have to kind of note that and just be a little bit more um, observant of the body language, I would say. Um, videos and more videos. Yeah. Video everything. Um, that tends to be your best thing with spaniels because you won't get time at the time to look at them. You've got to be able to process them. Um, we will talk a little bit further on about um, how to do a little bit more with that um but that's a different section i want to just get on to casting um do you want to talk about casting julie so casting um when we're referring to it um is where the dog uh does a circular moment a circular movement um depending on the extension of your line to try and find <laughs> and um it's often if they've sort of just gone too far too quickly or took a wrong turn they could look at casting um the clients that i sort of trail um some of them cast loads some of them cast a lot they'll go they'll go too far they'll cast to try and find it again they'll pick it up and they'll go um it's normally because they're, they're just going quite fast like i said that they're in the moment they're going quite fast um and it's pretty much, it's, it's kind of like a, a negative, but it's in the movement. So if you don't know what casting is, it's a little bit like um, lunging a horse would probably be the way I'd describe it. I don't know if that's right um, terminology. Um, they just sort of change direction and swoop back around um, on you. Um, and they can sometimes go in the opposite direction as well. Um, it can also sometimes be really quick circles. And especially if you're working in sort of dense environments with lots of environmental stuff, you can get really tangled around trees. So if you've ever done um, 
any off path work, any off piece work through the middle of lots of shrubbery, hedgerows, trees, etc. Et um, because they're quick thinkers, they will often go, oh, it's here, no, it's there. Um, and you'll probably get quite wrapped up because they will just sort of go. Um, and you can get quite tangled. So for rest, I wanted to speak about casting because it's what I see the most in the Spaniels. Um, it's not every Spaniel, some Spaniels trail and they're really nice lines out. Um, mine have started to do it a little bit more now. And I think it's to do with the weather, the, the weather and the wind picking up at the moment. Um, I think they lose the trail um, and then they look at casting to try and refind it. So if we were looking to sort of troubleshoot this behavior, um, then we would allow them to cache to try and find it if they don't do it um, within maybe one circular motion around you then I would look to reel in your line um, there's really no point of them constantly doing this circling around to try and find it I know other instructors might say um, different things but um, if a dog is really quick to get frustrated um, it, it really isn't good to allow them to keep doing that spiraling motion because they're just going to get in this frantic thing that they can't find the scent and it's it's the job they want to do. Um, so for me, I would look at sort of shortening my line and maybe working closely with my instructor and doing the blue line trails again if your dog casts a lot um, and if they're losing the trail a lot, do blue line trails um, and bring your dog back a little bit onto the trail and work with your instructor. Um, like I said, I think a lot of the time it's just because they're going quite fast, they'll sort of head off in a direction and then go, oh, I've lost it. Um, they sort of move first, think, think, think second, um, or my, my Spaniels do. Um, so that can always be a, a, a difficult one. But yeah, so I would look at um, doing some blue line trails if your dog is struggling with casting, but it's quite natural. Um, it's quite natural for them to do a lot of breeds do it but spaniels seem to do it with a bit of extra flair i'm gonna say um so yeah for that for that one just keep an eye on it and just work closely with your instructor um and don't let them just go frantic ex exp especially if um they're quite high um high to excite if that makes sense high to arouse um i think davina's just said that a smaller a shorter line makes mine circle more. Yeah, I think with the Spaniels, there's no set rule with the lines. I'd, um, both of mine guys trail really differently. Um, River isn't that, she doesn't cast that often, but she do, she will cast. Um, but I've noticed it recently trailing over the winter, like I said, she casts a lot more if it's a windy day and especially in open areas. Um, and that's where she will tend to cast. So. Um, I work with both Catherine to instruct mine and also Jerry Moss, um, who's on here, I think. Um, and I just speak to those guys and it's just tips that they give me as well. Um, but looking at clients' dogs, I've noticed where we've tried different types of things um, and some work for some and some work for others. If you've got a really, I'm going to say Carol with Georgia and I'm sure she won't mind Carol with Georgia um, Georgia is like high on life she gets out of the car she's high on life she opens her eyelid she's high on life so absolutely everything is excitement um, so when she's doing a trailing she wants to get there as quick as she possibly can it's all exciting it's all frustrating and then if we allow her to do these massive casting because she's going so quick she'll come off um, she'll come off the trail, she'll lose the scent and then she'll whip round into this massive big lunge and poor Carol will go with her. Um, so for, for Georgia, it isn't, it isn't sort of a good training perspective to leave her just constantly doing circles um, around to try and find the scent because basically they've lost it. So um, yeah, Davina says she gets very dizzy. Um, so yes. Yeah, so Julian, it links to what you're saying is the spaniels OCD. If they start circling, they continue circling and circling and circling and so. And they, some dogs can get stuck in it. Um, yeah. They stop casting. They just start running. Um and just doing busy things. Um. So that's is something to watch. Sometimes they're working and sometimes they just don't know what to do. So they're just doing spaniel things, um, which involves running around in circles at high speed. Usually taking their handler out at some point. And the the yeah. <laughs> 
We've had many a spangle to a shin. Um, oh, that's amazing. So yes, yeah, so for me, it's just, yeah, keep, so play with your line, have a little look, re look at reading your dog. Um, the Spaniels, for me, it's taken me ages to try and learn to, to read my Spaniels from my Shepherd. Um, but yeah, just sort of, for me, what works with my girl um, is just shorter line and bringing her back further down the trail so that she picks up the scent again. Um, thankfully, she's not, um, she's not too OCD, not about that anyway. She's OCD about rats, um, but yeah, not about that. So, um, should we talk about on and off the trail? Yeah, let's talk about it. Do you want to start with that? I don't mean to start with it. You can go with that one and I'll check the chat. Yeah, super. Um, on and off the trail. So when we talked before about negatives and casting, Spaniels, when they get on and off the trail, it's very hard to read generally. What the only difference you tend to see is when they have on the trail and critter in a very similar behaviors they've gone doo -doo -doo, like a small scene time down the trail and then all of a sudden you've had either a moment where the trails paused and they've carried on now they haven't stopped pause i mean what i mean by pause is the wrong word then pause is that there was a slight slack in the line when you had a moment to take your breath and then you were dragged further on that is the moment your dog has potentially made a decision to swap to something else and they have now gone Oh, there was a pheasant here 15 minutes ago. I um, got more on job duty to find that pheasant. So that can be one of those things that you kind of get a switch in it. It's very hard to read. And again, it comes down to a lot. We talk about foundations with spaniels, foundations, foundations, and then some more foundations, which we will explain a bit further on. Um, it's, it's that change in speed or what we have actually Jolene's dog, River. I don't know if you want to explain River when she changes to critter in, her tail goes wild um, yeah which has changed recently in the next bit so if you carry on for that one so i'll do after this oh yeah we got critter in yeah super um see we're really well organized you can tell guys <laughs> keep dropping out um in that moment hesitation is then just before they commit to that excitement and it's real subtle and with spaniels, I'm actually, I don't tend to watch them so much. I tend to go by feel. Captain's that fast and I am being dragged along behind him that I can't always watch him. I'm usually trying not to get killed. Um, and we did some brilliant trail actually. We were with Choline, we were with um, another instructor and we trailed through um, a load of really high ferns. Like, we lot, well, Jolene's quite a bit shorter than I am and they, they dwarfed you and they were up to like my eyeballs. And we're running trails. I can't see Captain. I, all I can see is like Jurassic Park is these ferns moving in front of me. It was amazing. And I all I could do is feel him. Now, I had no idea if he was on off the trail by his body language because I couldn't look and see him. I knew he was on off his trail by the way he was pulling. And I knew the moment he switched to another animal because I felt the, the like, oh, it's an animal pull, which is different to his proximity, which is a steam train four wheel drive. Um, so a lot of feel can make a big difference. And that's when we talk, you know, we talk about casting and line handling, and we will talk further about line handling. Your communication with your dog is that line. And it's really important to not only read your dog visually, but also be in tune with your spaniel, which is a hard thing as a spaniel owner, because you're very frustrated by the fact that they want to go 9,000 miles per hour on the trail. Um, right. Have you got anything to add to that, Jolene? No, I think that's fine. I love that. It was the best, sort of one of the best days trailing because prior to that, so my, I've been an instructor for about two years and um, prior to that, I was just a pet dog owner. So for someone to say to me, oh, you should be able to feel it in the line and I'm there trailing, like I can't feel any difference. There's nothing going on here. Um, and then literally I had my, like I could see, but I just couldn't see my dog. Um, those ferns were literally above my head and I've got some photos that I use um, for marketing and stuff. Um, and that was the only time that I actually had to, A, trust my dog. Um, B, I couldn't get involved because sometimes um, you can overthink your trails and get too involved. Um, and C, like I literally had to go on the line and it was the only day that I really felt the consistency and the difference in, in the line. Um, but yeah, it was a really good day um, of, of trailing. Um, so if you ever get the opportunity to trail anywhere with high ferns or high shrubbery, um, then definitely go and do that with your spaniel. Um, it's really good for your line handling. 
um, because that you will definitely feel the difference. Um, should we move on to crittering? Conscious of the carefully if you're going to do that. You can't see the dog. Please don't. Yeah, don't, don't kill. Um, Go on, Jolene. Yeah, don't don't kill yourself or anything. Take it steady. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really good way of um, the line. Critterin, I'm really glad I've got come on to this subject. It is the number one bane of my life. Um, Just explain what critterin is, what we describe critterin as before. So you when go. I say critterin, I mean switching to another animal. So another animal, probably another scent, another form of distraction. So whatever your dog is distracted by so say for instance you work in urban mainly and your dog loves food it could be the fact that it swaps to food that's been left or dropped on the floor for me I mainly talk about it to animals animals are the bane of my man trailing journey um reef not so much who's my new sprocker um river oh god I don't know why I bother half the time um River is the the <clears throat> eternal task. It has to be um, on her terms, and she will get to her misba um, when she's checked out other bits and pieces. She never used to be that bad, but a few things happened on trails and stuff. And at the moment, she's gone. I think she's gone a bit self-employed outside of trailing. So now she just thinks, oh, well, I'll have a little have a go over here and we'll see over there. And oh, my God, there's a bird and we get a bit of pointing. Um, so, yeah, so for river, for crittering, um, I want to talk about it because a lot of the time they can just sometimes look like it's the same intensity or that they're still doing their job, which is to find the person that you sent out for them. Um, but the little monkeys have just swapped onto something that's more intriguing. So you think about what that could be for your dog and that could be your quittering. So um, for River, it's really, it's quite a good one, apart from the fact that I've noticed it's just changed. Her body language is ever changing um, for trailing. So when River was trailing her human, the first thing I spot, started to spot was her, um, her tail. So when she was going after human scent, her tail was like an indicator tick tock tick tock tick um it kind of hung low like that not low like i mean and i don't know if you can see that but not low as in i'm scared just sort of below the body line and it was tick 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 like an indicator if she's going after a critter it's high and it's i can't even do it it's just ridiculous it's the vibrate wag that we get um so that was the one thing that I um, spotted with River. Um, and I've had to do a lot of work outside of man trailing in order to know what her body language was when she was going after an animal. So I took River to a field, a secure field, um, and I just let her off and I just stood at the bottom of the field and I watched her traverse and quarter this field. And I viewed her head height was the next one. So when she is on um, human scent, um, after the scent, she is um, about an inch, two inch off the floor. When she's following an animal, she's actually really close to the floor. So that was another one for me um, to, to observe while we were trailing. Um, the other thing is the breathing. And now I'm gonna admit this um, because I haven't spotted this yet, um, but Jerry always tells me that her breathing changes. And I'm not sure if it's just because I'm too flustered with my line handling that I just haven't spotted her breathing. So apparently her breathing changes. Um, so I need to, to video my trails um, and keep an eye on that. So for you guys going out now, be really keen. If you do some trails over the next four weeks or something, if you find any of these um, on your dog and you observe any of these, drop me a message back and let me know if any of them sort of ring true to your dogs. Um, tension for river like i said she's there's tension all the time with her um the only thing i get is i get sort of when she goes on to critter she gets it more complacent it's a more complacent type of dum 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 study type of tension study type of pace um when she's on her human it's a it's it's not as predatory it, it's not stalking, but she kind of stalks quickly when she swapped to Critter. 
where as if she's going after her um human scent it's not as stalky if that makes sense it's, it's a, there's a slight change in the air of energy isn't there there's like a like a, a like an increased hum when she goes Whoa, birds and yeah. there's not a lot of change to her but it you can you can see it and i hope that you can kind of feel the um i'm sorry guys if you're videos for stuff because he hates videos yeah she, she goes just a bit stiffer if that makes sense like a bit ugh. Um, so that's what happens to her. What I had to do with her is because she was just such a nose, um, and it was really ruining my uh, man trailing journey. I made the decision to just trail urban with her. I was like, right, you little, um, we're going to urban. There'll be no distractions there. She's not a big foodie. Um, so I knew that wasn't going to be an issue. She's not really into people. Um, she hasn't got any sort of things with dogs or anything like that. So I made the effort to go to urban, um, now, the one thing with urban is you do get limiting distractions, um, but it's a lot harder for the handlers. Um, you have to really be on the ball with your line handling if you swap to urban and you haven't done urban before. Um, you have to really be mindful that you're trailing beside roads or down sort of alleyways. You're not really sure. You can't see what's really coming. Um, so for that, it's a little bit harder to get sort of your negatives as well and especially if you think about how the wind and things um, are going to move in the environment around buildings things like that if you look at trailing down a road and there's a building on your left hand side if you look to take a left turn and the wind is coming straight ahead of you your dog could potentially just go straight out into the road um, so for an urban setting they're great in one way because you get rid of all the environment and um, the environmental distractions but it's also loads harder for the handler um, and it's harder to get those negatives as well. Um, they also can't really cast in an urban environment. So again, a lot of the dogs struggle with that. Um, and a lot of the Spaniels, especially if they used to work in longer lines, they have to then get used to having a shorter line in urban. Um, and like I said, that casting, some I, if I'm on the side of a road, I can't have a cast. Um, so a handler has to get a lot more involved um, with that. Rural is easier in trailing, I suppose, in terms of for the handler, for line handling in some ways, if we've just put it into that, but not for critters. What I did, uh, which I am kicking myself now, is um, I literally did, I concentrated on trailing so that I could um, get to learn her body language. We moved to urban. We were, she, she, she's a fantastic dog um, in her own little right. Um, it's just going to be worth it to her. She's just sassy is what, how I could describe her. So now I'm going back into more rural. Um, I'm struggling. Um, we did have an incident in urban where she was bitten by a rat. Um, so now we just urban and critter for rats in urban areas. So if I was to do any conservation work, she'd be the number one rat detection dog ever right now. Um, so for us, we're, we're going back to doing hunter trails. So when we said hunter trails, we're going back to high city, um, sort of like a 100 or 200 meter trail broken down into three or four bits um, with lots of rewards along the way. So three or four rewards along the way for a hunter trail for us. So she gets real quick, instant hits um, and real quick succession. Um, so that <coughs> it's <too> quick. <coughs> fighting for her that she hasn't got time to think about the environment and things like that um hunter trials work really well for her you could also look at doing intensity trials as well and delayed start trails so the intensity trails is where they see the missing person hiding up and they're fired up and they're rewarded really quickly um and it's, it's sort of very instant so it's just a massive big jackpot high you're just giving them that instant quick high um and then look at going through sort of delayed trails and then doing that through those areas that they're really struggling with critters so like like i said for us it's just any movement she's just a little movement queen so it could be birds it could be a squirrel rats are for us it could be a cat it could be anything that you're trailing on could be your critter so for troubleshooting that i would look at doing a higher intensity um to get your dogs really high and back in on the game and then i'd just be mindful that i what i found as well is um because i put lots more intensity into it her their body language could potentially change um so don't always think oh my dog's head's at this height um 
her tail's wagging this yes we're definitely on it and I only trail in in rural I'm now going to go to urban and expect the same thing because it, it it's probably not going to happen you won't get the instant click where the dog gives you the same body language um or well, river hasn't anyway it'd be interesting to see if anybody else does um and then the other thing I've noticed is because I've put a lot more intensity in that waggy tail that was there for her critters is now the waggy tail that's there for her mispers so her hidey person um or the trail layer um which is great because she's obviously viewing the trail as that excitement and on par to her critters now um it just takes my brain a while to sort of recompute um and to figure out what she's doing so um is there any questions so far i think we're all right no that we're good the only other thing to do is just like i said just practice multiple areas um and don't avoid them like I did that would be the my number one tip don't avoid them because um you're just gonna have to work work on them at some point um and just put lots more intensity in there Catherine are you back can you hear me yes sorry um puppy was at the door going <laughs> <laughs> and uh we, we don't distrust puppy um I think that's awesome I think Riven's like a really good example of a crittering a not crittering dog as well she's uh doing some because yeah, she is just i love her dearly but some days i just want to bang my head off a wall um whereas oh, Reed, my, my rocker he's not quite right he's he's not the sharpest tool um so he's actually quite good he, like he's quite easy for me and so it's like a nice little walk in, it's not a walk in the park because he drags me at about 60 miles an hour into whatever he can get me into um, and over whatever he can get me into um, but he's kind of like on the trail or off the trail rivers kind of worked out how um to manipulate it i suppose to manipulate the trail to her own benefit the little cow um yeah. so yeah that's um super um i'm going to talk about quartering versus flowing negatives um so one of the things that we were talking about negatives as being a, a behavior which um it tells you that there's no scent there when we use a term with the man trailing global and probably other um versions of man trailing and on methods is we use the term flowing negative and that is if the trail went in a straight line and the dog goes like this and does like a ziggity zaggity loopy loo as they go along it's called a flowing negative where um the I'm just actually going to stop for a second. We've had two comments, and before I go any further, I'd like to address them. Actually, um, um, so I've just seen a pop up on the chat. So before I go any further, and we we change subjects, um, Casper, I love the journey in Russia. I get every time I trail my spaniels. Line handling is a challenge, and the ability to read them is fun. Luna's been able to trail in environments full of pheasants because we've built foundations. Don't anyone with a spaniel lose heart? They can trail beyond the curtain. They can. They, they honestly can. It just takes a bit of time. Um, That's these, exactly. Because they're actually quite natural at, at following scent, you tend to push them for push them on, um, and you can sometimes skip those foundations, and then that can be sometimes further down the line where you get the problems. So it's really worth investing. River did has done really really well recently since I've just invested lots of time and intensity with her, um, and any dog can do it. It's just you've just got to literally sort of put the time and effort into it. Um, so Davina's put urban use to my nemesis because the short lines we worked hard on it and now she's been better urban and she's rural as every now and then she does go critting I need to watch a change in her breathing too I've not managed to catch it yet the problem is you're usually behind the dog going <laughs> and you're going breathe in I can only hear my heart in my head um, and it's, it is hard to listen to that but again video is a good one and I'm just trying to well we could all get a bit fitter really I think as well um, just trying to take that in um watching tails is a good one with spaniels definitely a good um behavior to watch any more questions or anything that links to crittering guys before i go into negatives so we're not jumping around too much can you use a canny cross body harness on yourself to improve line handling oh sue you've jumped the gun um we're going to talk about line handling in a bit yeah in it yeah she's on it i love it i love it love it we're going to talk about line handling a bit. Hey guys but if you can just bear with us 
um we are literally going to do like the well not the a to z but we are going to go through as much um we can so we did tell you it was jam-packed um and it is running over a little bit long and i thought it was going to run over um yes leaf chasing the wind comes under crittering because your dog is doing something else that i i would call that just um switching jobs that one um if the dog is not on the task and is using scent or it's icy over things it's generally crittering and leaf chasing children chasing ball chasing could come under that um as well um but it takes a bit of time it's priorities basically what's your dog's priority is it the trail or is it other stuff within the trail so if i can give it a second if there's comments come up do, 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 do. um right quartering versus flow negative so when you describe a flow negative within the man trailing we do is say the trail's in a straight line and this is a dog going yep yep i'm on the trail i'm trying oh no i've lost the trail, trail i'll come back about oh there's a scent there's a scent there's an oh no, i've lost it again da, 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 there it is and what the dog is doing going yes the trail's here no the trail's not there most dogs don't tend to go oh i'm on the trail follow it unless you've got like a, it's usually a german shepherd or a hound that does that but not all of them do it what spaniels tend to do because quartering is a gun dog term is a natural behavior is where they're hunting for scent so as the dog's following the trail the dog isn't following the best description i can say as and this is my interpretation other people might say it's different is the spaniel is not following the trail the spaniel is following the hunt for the trail so it's hunting for the trail and going yep here it is yep no it's that yep, there yep i've got it i've got it this was this way this is way. it's not necessarily going oh a to b like we talked before it's a to z like oh that, that's not the trail i'll disregard that oh there's the trail there's the trail oh I, that's something else no i'll disregard that i'll come back to that later and um, i don't know if you agree with that jolene the, the the dogs are kind of working on the scent but also the whole time going yes no yes no yes no yes no as they go along rather than going yep i'm on the trail and head down in movement and quick in decision making um i think that's what makes them do it so they're basically following the scent to the to its very edge on say for instance you're walking down a, a track um to either side and going basically oh i've run out coming back in oh i've run out i'm coming back in um what you tend to see is people obviously sort of relating it to a spaniel that naturally quarters um and because a spaniel naturally quarters you can often get quite a bit of that um they're quite wide aren't they you'll find the spaniels if there's a path they'll use whole path if you've got a field they might quarter to the end of the 10 meters of line and they might do like this Con, it's, it, it's hard work as a handler to do with it's very wide it's normal it's fine you will find as a man training journey it tends to get a little bit more concise but spaniels do like to work to the edge of things so if you've got because scent sticks at the edge of things you know scent sticks to moisture and it sticks to vegetation so they will tend to aim to a to b um, but it is quartering it, it's the same behavior by a different name it's just in man trailing it's a bit tighter because they're physically restrained by the length of your line you have Whereas if the dog's out on a normal walk, if anyone watches a spaniel, it comes down to cast kind of like, where's the spaniel um, image? It's two fields away doing this, making you feel dizzy because they're, they're hurting, hunting, hurting. They're hunting for scent all the time. Um, and they're working backwards and forwards and they're going, yes, no, yes, this is fun. Oh, there's a rabbit here, they'll kind of follow it. And they're making all those little decisions, those micro decisions in their brain about what to do, what not to do. and should it should i follow this or should i not um and it's normal and it's fine it's just very hard as a handler because it tends to be quite back wrenching the dog suddenly goes right and then left and then tries to kill you off by accident they're not doing it because they're manic or they're being silly they're doing it to sort that scent and work through it um and it's important that spaniels have the opportunity to do that because that's really normal genetic behavior and it's really normal scent behavior for them it's really normal working behavior and they want to do it and you'll see even non-working versions of show versions do it that they will do quite wide flow negatives where they're working further on a different dog whereas you get a hound or a german shepherd or a more like trailing breed um they will tend to work a bit closer to the trail and nose down um and if anyone's tried to do tracking with a spaniel i tried to track my spaniel and on the day i couldn't the, the instructor was like i've never seen a dog track like this he's not doing it right and i suddenly twigged what it was about an hour later my spaniel went yeah um so i follow this footstep and then i come in on the right and then i follow this footstep and i come in on the left and this she kept going in like this 
And initially I thought she didn't get it. She she got it. She just doesn't follow set in a straight line. She's a spaniel. So she came in on the curve because she was checking other stuff as she went. Um, so her tracking would need to teach her to track. Whereas trailing, she just follows the scent and she can be as free as she wants. But it was really interesting to see her work scent differently. It's also why you see drugs dog spaniels or detection, not drugs dogs, but like detection dogs. You'll see a spaniel come in the room and go right at the wall. There's the drugs. And they come in and they have, they can't just go a straight line. It doesn't exist in a spaniel's mind. There's no such thing as a straight line. There's only squiggles. So they tend to come in and just come a little bit manic. Um, and, um, but that's what they're bred to do. They're bred to cover large areas when they're picking up birds or when they're flushing birds, because the more area they cover, the increased chance of finding the bird if it's been shot or the increased chance of flushing a bird if they're flushing. Would you agree with that, Jolene? Yep, definitely. I think we've had a couple of more comments. Super, do you want to read the comments out? Uh, Jay. Working cockers and a few show cockers and springers, sprockers make up the second largest breed group that train with me in the lakes. My second calf, they can be a challenge to learn um, with, but don't be disheartened as they're awesome trailers. Yeah, they're absolutely fab dogs. Um, and what we're discussing tonight, it's no one size fits all. We're just sort of talking about predominantly either our own dogs or the dogs that we trail. Um, so it's not a generalization. Um, of what we're covering. We just want to try and cover enough so that at least a few people get some different bits from it, if that makes sense through the talk. Um, they're all some trailers. They can just sometimes be one of the more challenging breeds to learn to line handle with, but equally some very straight line and very, very focused. Whenever a Spaniel book's on with me, I'm always excited because they're, they're so much fun to trail. We have an absolute hoot with them and they're completely different. Uh, Kath said I had exactly the same problem with tracking. Um, with um, not coming in as a straight line. And then Kirsty says, quartering reminds me of a lifeboat search pattern. It's full of purpose. Kirsty has Newfoundland that does finding people. Ah. It's awesome, Newfoundland. Flora's amazing. Um, sorry, talking about other breeds that um, are awesome. Um, yeah, Spaniels are good fun. I remember what we're talking about tonight is our opinion, our knowledge, and what we interpret. There's a thousand and one ways to teach anything. Um, we're just hoping that this this webinar might give you go oh yeah tail didn't think about that or actually what I'm doing outside man trailing might be affecting my man trailing and we're going to talk now about the end of the trail which got a lot more about things that you can do and then we're going to have we've got to talk about um, troubleshooting and things that you can do so we're hopefully going to get our ass through this a little bit faster now because I understand it's nine o'clock and you guys have been here two hours you're committed we've only lost about 10 people off so that's not too bad <laughs> I've gone to bed gone off so I'm talking about spaniels super so I'm just gonna um screen share again so I look like I actually know what I'm doing do, 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 do. the end of the trail so um I'm going to talk about the rewards and then I would like Jolene you talk about Spaniel and Spaniels because it comes back to River again because she's a Spaniel and Spaniel um and then potentially moving subjects so rewards generally with the man trailing we talk about food being king we we have a cut that you have a wet food that dogs can lick from and you know savor at the end and get all those endorphin release and we talk about the hunt prey kill the dog hunts the prey which is a finding the missing person they get to them and they devour their food we just don't have the kill bit um the problem with spaniels is they're not interested in the kill bit generally unless you're my murderous springer spaniel or river um my my springer spaniel is a murderous bugger um they tend to be more movement based and they tend to be more prey based. So what happens is we get there with some some wet food in the tub and they go, yeah, thanks, whatever. I'm busy. I'm off again. And they don't want to know about. Um, uh, sorry, I don't want to see you guys. They don't want to know about your pot full of food. They're not interested in it. It's not got enough reward to them. What they want to do is get movement or have fun or run again, which is where the intensity trails, that little follow on trail after our main trails, um, is really important to a lot of spaniels what you'll get with the reward is some spaniels will come into the person clock them in the bush and go yep that's my uh, that's my misper i'm gonna go up here and they won't come in on the person they 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 don't want to get involved with them because the reward 
it's more rewarding to do spaniel things and to sniff than it is to get to the person because they know when they get the person the game's going to end so you do have to think outside the box so i think actually marie with hebe's on this um so i'm hoping she um she might she might she's part of one about outside the box yeah she's on still yeah so um marie with hebe uses bubbles to reward hebe um a little bubble machine and she goes well for it and it's amazing because that's what she likes um it's not a problem to use that and i haven't i haven't been from marie's journey i know she's traveled with other instructors um it's what we've seen is when i've done stuff with her is this the dog just goes yeah i found the person where's my bubbles and that's what she likes i think you probably could have thrown loads of food at her head and she wouldn't care she likes playing with bubbles um I've seen a lot of Spaniels like to do the parading at the end. So you get a toy with them. Um, Marie's put bubbles, leaves, molehills and water splashes, all of which are usually find, findable. Um, so you can see this dog wants to do movement based things or like digging things. She wants to do like more breed, like fun behavior. And a lot of Spaniels aren't going to take a tasty treat. So Captain My Male Springer, he's a really good man trailer. He's awesome. He will eat food at the end. He does not savour it. He swallows it whole, usually bites the person by accident with the food pot and takes their fingers off because he comes in and goes, bang. Pretty sure he thinks he's a Malinois. Um, he grabs the pots, inhales the food, tends to try and crunch the pots as well, and then goes, yeah, 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 whatever, run on. And just looks at the misper like, why aren't you running? I switched to a toy with him and he trails 10 times better now and he doesn't take out the misper at the end he comes in and he goes where's my toy we have a huge game he loves to play tuggy um, and the only time he sees a ball on the road is man trailing and he plays tuggy with the misper they run off again he plays tuggy again and then we play tuggy all about the car and he looks like a little malinois on the end of it he's growling he's fighting the toy that's his reward now if i i wouldn't use that in other types of day to day he doesn't get that any time apart from man trailing man trailing his time to beat the crap out of this ball and you know have fun i can use food but food will not override other stuff for him because he's not interested he'll eat it but it doesn't override stuff it hasn't got high enough value but i can give him high value stuff he doesn't touch the size he just swallows it whole um and he would literally choke himself on something stupid because he's an idiot spaniel he's somewhere under my chair actually um so the movement base so bubbles flirt poles are a really good one um or even like cat toys which put out durable enough but something you can flick about when that spaniel comes in you get in the mist to go oh i've got something fun a ball or a line or a flirt pole you see the spaniel go bing you're worth interacting with and they want to get involved so finding the right reward can be really hard for a spaniel but it's also incredibly appointment important appointment important um claire cantel's put my spaniels an absolute praise junkie i call them attention whores um and he wants to take his, he wants attention. So some Spaniels go, found you. Look, look guys, I found them. Have you seen? I'm so amazing. I do find that more in bull breeds actually over Spaniels. I find bull breeds are real attention whores. Um, but Spaniels, they want another than ace and that's okay. Um, that's okay. They want to, I, I don't care what your Spaniels reward is. I'm not interested in what you perceive it as. I want to know what that Spaniels value in it. Um, and your homework on that is if is to go out and do selection tests and try and find something they find fun. Captain loves playing tuggy, but we don't play a lot of tuggy in my house because I've got a German Shepherd and the Malinois. It all ends in tears because everybody just wants the ball. So he gets he only gets it one to one time with me. Then we brought into man trailing and it's become something he finds highly valuing. But one thing I did was let him play with lots of people. He's quite an aloof dog. So there's no point handing it to a stranger on man trailing because he just goes. Yeah. he had to learn that people man training would produce the ball and he had to learn that playing tuggy with people was fun same with if you've got a dog that's a bit nervous people teaching them that food comes from pots and then from people is a really good one squeaky toys is a winner winner love a squeaky with a spaniel they just go bananas for it, it just makes them little primal bing bing prey brain go off and it's it's really good fun so squeaky pocket tug i think tug enough to do like little squeaky rabbit ones they're yeah. not very durable though they do not last long in the spaniel gob but they are good fun um and you can have, get a synthetic version or have to have a rabbit skin jolene's going to tell you about fred in a minute um because <laughs> i love fred um but you can also get rabbit balls as well for, like gun dog people use them or dummies if your dog's got 
association with gun dog stuff and dummies and retrieving it and it finds it fun as long as you're it's not going to affect your actual job or, or your other training bring a dummies a fine or bringing whatever it doesn't matter if the dog wants to carry it all back to the car it's fine um nancy's put a five years and i still can't find a raw of my sussex spaniel that is not a breed i have specifically trailed with actually the sussex spaniel because there's very few in the country um and they often get um confused with field spaniel or a cocker um it's a different one it would have to be i could suggest if i could see the dog um trailing I might be able to give some more suggestions on that one. Um, but it is a hard one. Um, if you don't know, and some dogs, with Jolene will talk about River, it's hard work. You just don't, it's the one day you'll stumble on it. <laughs> so I'll pass over to you, uh, Jolene, to talk about River and Fred and um, all the things that we may have planned to try and find a reward that she really, truly likes. To get over the crittering, obviously I had to up my game with my rewards so that it um, was more rewarding to find the person than the environment was, which if you can imagine is actually really, can be really hard work sometimes. Um, so Fred is um, a rabbit skin. I played with at home and rivers like pupils dilate, she absolutely loves it. Um, so I basically started bringing it to trailing um, and the looks I got because I would just literally hand Fred over to the MISPA um, and it's, it's a full rabbit skin minus the head um, so I'm not sure it was perceived very well but bless these MISPAs were really obliging them they were really good MISPAs they would head off with Fred hidden down their top um, to go and hide um, but I've found a lot with River and a lot with Spaniels, and I've looked into this mainly because I've struggled with recall a lot with River, um, is that when Spaniels flick into that hunt and that prey drive, um, they often switch off their hunger hormones. So River's really hard to get any food kind of motivation into her um, because she wants to run and chase um, and she has a real big chase drive. Um, she doesn't necessarily want to eat. So when River gets to her misper, although I can get her to eat now, I have to come up with some random stuff. I'm sure I've used like spaghetti hoops or beef broth soup at some point. It's, it is just really random. She comes with all sorts, with cheese marmite or something, wasn't that long ago? I have no idea. Like, I think she had cat dinners, all sorts. No. Of yeah, um, I think I brought McDonald's breakfast wraps one day. Um, so for yeah for her she basically gets to her mispers um and she's so over um over excited adrenaline's through the roof her pupils are all dilated so for her to get her to to concentrate on any kind of toy uh, just wasn't going to work even if she's got a lot of um drive for that toy at home um so it, it literally is worth thinking about so it isn't always going to be food so a lot of the time we do say to um, to people, oh, your spaniel will come um, bring food pots. For me, bring anything, um, bring anything that could potentially work with your dog and let's try it and let's allow the dog to 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 pick what they want um, at the end. And, and like I think Lynn's just said there, um, Lynn's just said rewards can change. My Springer always trailed for food and big cuddles, but once he did his conservation training, he decided that the tennis ball is now the best thing ever and won't look at food or the mist he wants to play with his tennis ball. Yeah, it's it's just it's really different. So for my guys, I always switch up the food. They don't always have the same pots. It's not necessarily what's going to be easy for me. It's got to be what's better for my dog, um, especially if I'm doing um dealing with issues with crittering and losing focus and stuff um tennis balls she'll give and take she does like sort of the, the squashy toys do you, do you remember the toys that used to come from mcdonald's she loves those um but again she won't take that off of a misper i've tried flirt poles i've tried rabbit balls tried fred the rabbit skin um my next one i'm going to try is um i'm gonna try and see if i can get rat scent and Sent up a toy um, and see if you get the crittering into the toy that she gets at the end. I'll let you all know how that goes. But yeah, we'll do that always, is just, yeah, worth thinking 
can how um high they get while they're on the trail might mean that they just don't want to take food at the end i'd love it if she would just take a tennis ball rivers um searches for kong and she's rewarded with kong but she she's not very into it she's just such a she's such a sassy pants um so yeah but it's always worth just changing it up as well and bringing multiple things um and if you find the right reward um like you said it, w- it will really do wonders um unless you've got one of those dogs that just that's just in it for the trail that's just in it for the scent itself um should we move on to moving um, I was going to jump past that and actually go on to progression contamination because it's yeah. not that relevant the moving subjects. Um, the main thing is things change with rewards, and it's okay if they don't if they aren't fussed about reward. If they always find the person and they enjoy it, then if, they, if a dog does a man trail, it won't man trail. You can't force a dog to use its nose. So it's nice if you can find a reward they like, but don't panic. Um, progression. Oh. Uh, we- so before we go on, like a reef would literally just do it for a cuddles for the mispers, wouldn't he? He's just had like, a laugh. A, he's so easy, that dog. Um, he would just do it for cuddles. So I wouldn't even have to feed him. It, it would be the cheapest man trailing dog alive. Um, but yeah, it's just finding what works um, and, and going from there, what works for your dog. Um, should we go on to contamination stuff? Yeah, let's jump forward to contamination. Um, so contamination is a hard one to find. We've talked about crittering things and it just kind of links in with that one. Um, they're genetically prone and they're, they're designed to follow the freshest scent because that's the most likelihood of flushing a pheasant. That's the most likelihood of retrieving a bird that's been shot. So when you think about what spinal spread for, they are generally genetically coded for the freshest scent. I can't prove that, that's my opinion. Um, but when you think about the red for, that's what they're designed to do. So they're going to do it. So when we do man training, we're like, yep, you can find this person, but something's crossed this trail, you know, bird, squirrel, whatever. The dog's gonna go, need to find person, but squirrel, likelihood of getting reward from squirrel, fairly high. Fun of chasing squirrel, very high. And they'll naturally want to change. So contamination is a big issue. So we talk about urban can be useful. Yeah, it's great. But you'll still get contamination urban. We had we I've literally have rats run across trails in urban. It's disgusting, it's life. Um, literally run across in front of the dogs. Obviously, poor river got bitten. Um, so there isn't a lack of contamination there. And it's just that you get less critters, but there's an increase in contamination from fresher people scent. And if you've got a dog that's like, yep, I want to find people and they're keen on it but they haven't quite got the game and they're like, just find the freshest scent. I've, I've followed the trail. Oh, someone's walked past this. I'm going to switch because the likelihood of reward is there. Um, it can be difficult for the dogs to kind of get through that. And what I find actually best with Spaniels from day dot is to embrace contamination, crack on with it and do not isolate them from it. Get that dog in the middle of town doing intensities past other people. Get them working on... Um, busy environments because they will selectively switch off the background noises if you've ever been reading a book on a train you can't hear anything you can't hear the conductor saying stuff you can't hear the chatter you're just focusing on it and you can teach a spaniel to focus in on that scent almost like when you know i say a book on the train it'll be a phone on the train when you're on your phone on the train book on the train it's not like that anymore it's a bloody kindle on your phone um when you focus in on it other stuff turns off and you want to be jumped out of it and we can teach spaniels to be like that it's about the reward and it's about the foundations but shying away from contamination and going oh well the trail contaminates the dog won't do it will mean that you will never you'll never get a chance to trail your spaniel because life is contaminated there's always going to be a fresher version of that scent that's either blown on the trail or cross the trail so embrace it do your blue line trailing where you know stuff is and do your knowing where the scent ends a backtrack trail is brilliant for working through contamination um so again we talked about splits before but a backtrack trail is where the trail comes so far up the misper walks i don't know say 10 meters to the left comes back and then goes on to the right what we've got here is a trail we've got a slight age and actually a stronger um version of the scent because it's been walked over twice and then you've got the fresh scent what you will find most spaniels do is go oh okay but trail stops usually go a little bit further on then come back what you're using that backtrack for is to not just deal with contamination but 
um, I should have brought it in before, is to it's deal negative, with but negatives. Yeah, negatives, so that you can read them, um, and so that you can understand the dog. Video has gone again. Um, that just tips into age trails as well because the dogs are designed to follow the fresher scent what you'll find with some spaniels not all and it's not happened with every spaniel i've worked with it's happened just with one or two i've kind of noticed it is when you offer an age trail and it's like half an hour, an hour old dog goes yeah there's an age trail there and i know it's the only person i've got to find but there is a fresher trail off sally who i trailed for three weeks ago and i'm going to follow their trail because they've got a reward history or reward memory with that person, they will switch to the fresher trail, which may give them a reward, if that makes sense. Um, so it can a shells can be difficult for some spaniels, not all. Again, this is this is an overarching spaniel conversation. Um, it, so it can be difficult. So you need to know as the instructor and the student where those newer trails and where the age trails are so that you can make sure the dog's either on the trail or if it's going off the trail why is it going off the trail is it blown scent is it is it environment is there other stuff going on um it's important to know do you want to talk about blown scent jolene so blown scent can often be a really difficult one with the spaniels because they so, so for me, if I speak in general for him, he's very much black and white, he's on it, he's off it. Blown scent, it's obviously still the scent, it's just in a sort of a weaker form and it's gone in sort of a, a more weaker direction, I would probably say. That would, would, would be my analysis of it. Obviously, it's not proper terminology and um, it's just the way I look at it for him. So it can often throw the dogs off quite a lot with blown scent because they'll go with the ent potential enthusiasm that they're still on the trail and then sort of come to this end where it just doesn't stop. So the Spaniels will want to work sort of, like we said, because they just really want to do it. They're really like sort of focused. They're really enthusiastic. Um, so what they might do is if they run out of blown scent, they might hunt for it and that you might end up getting sort of them into this hunt mode which is where they'll just keep going a little bit further on the off chance that they might catch it. Um, it doesn't always occur to them to turn back unless you've got a really sort of forward, like sort of down the line trained dog um, and you've put them an energy into sort of learning all the components of training and going down there. Um, the other thing I found with a lot of pet dogs that we trail um, is that if they do go on um, blown scent and the owner is quick to follow behind them. They can go on and they can go on for quite a long time. And we discussed this earlier. Um, the one thing I would say is on blown scent is that there is a difference in the body language. Um, and it is just a fact of setting up trails uh, where you're going to use the, the wind to your benefit. Um, when River is on blown scent, and I'll use her as an example, she's a little bit wishy-washy. Um, it's the only way I can describe it. It's a little bit loose. It's a little bit, ooh, a bit airy-fairy. Um, when she's on it, she's in momentum. She's down, and, and that's the only way I've done it is just by setting trails up where I've, I've used the environment and the wind to my friend to understand that body language. Um, but, yeah, blown scent will often just cause the, the, the spaniels to, to go on um, because they will just work the scent Um till its end and then potentially flick into hunt mode and keep going to try and find it again Does that makes sense that's to me any questions so far guys you're all very quiet at the moment you've either gone to sleep um or <laughs> we're just really yeah. answering we check if there's still people on yeah we could be talking to ourselves <laughs> <laughs> no people that's a load um so let's come to the 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 fun bit of owning a spaniel Line handling. Yeah. Line handling. Hard work. Get, I'll let you do, do the first bit and I'll be back in two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. yeah. Two seconds. Thanks. Super. Um, and I'll tell you now, there's um, unfortunately no magic trick to line handling. Um, you just have to practice, practice, and then practice some more. Spaniels are fast. You need to slow them down. You, um, you can put lead weights on them and they wouldn't slow down. Um, um, they wouldn't slow down. So you do have to um, quickly 
learn to be fast on the line and um who was it that um said about harness on people um it, it's fun get somebody either holding the line or line right around them or get a harness on them and get that person to run around like a spaniel um jolene i've just muted you because nero is barking so just unmute yourself um get your someone running around absolutely do it um and it's caroline's put i should have put a collie i did warn you caroline you should have had a collie um get someone to run around and move at speed and practice reeling that line in and out reading that line now what can happen a lot of spider people is they get the line so far out they end up getting the rest of the line in a bit of a tangle it tends to get a bit caught they try and reel back in they lose the loops and then they just get stuck at a length because they've got themselves in a the tangle or the dogs um they've got the line caught on their fingers and they panic by breaking their fingers which you should be so you've got to be quick in and out with a spaniel there's no stopping that you've got to be quick in and out because if that dog goes down the trail it's going yep i'm on the trail this is brilliant and so it goes oh the sense drifted it goes Pyong! to the left if you're not ready for it you're going to have your shoulder go out um i'm pretty sure jolene's um met usually injured because of her spaniel and anything else uh have you got bad neck jolene you you're still muted uh, um i'm sat here with a heat pad on my neck basically so um jenny's put um, everything you say applies to cairn terriers ah yeah well cairn terriers are tenacious little things they're like just full of it it all applies to any breed we're just talking about spaniels it's all the same thing i've almost been taken out by a shepherd on several occasions um i find the smaller dog the worst is to handle because they're much quicker and you're in and out like a yo-yo and then you get tangled because they're within your feet um practice makes permanence practice doesn't make perfect actually it was Dawn Heaton um one of the head trippers that said that to me and it resonated with me um that practice makes permanence when you are thinking about your line handling and practicing it do not practice the thing wrong get it in your head how to do it right and it is a real skill with spaniels to be able to reel um on the move and pull that line in and get it and not judge the line um it's but the only way you get this practice practice with your line on a fence reading a line in and out and i would also practice doing it with both hands as lead hands so i call land on the front of the line is your stop go but i call it the, the lead hand and the hand on the loops is my anchor hand that's my we're really putting the anchor in um learn to be ambidextrous with it because you never know where you're going to tangle around a bush and you're going to have to throw the line out catch it and carry on um yeah let Sue's put it yeah so yeah use a harness on yourself and um or on somebody else preferably um and practice pulling that line on them don't hurt them and what you do in the bedroom is up to you um but just practice that pressure and getting that line in and out at speed um it's important to be able to practice that because otherwise you're going to get your fingers caught and get yourself hurt um and you need to be able to practice those things um, if you haven't got a willing partner get your dog um, out on a long line on a walk carefully um, and have them trailing behind the line. It's not something I like doing. Um, it is something that we advise. Um, um, on, it's something that we, we talk about instructors, but it's not something I necessarily like, but you can practice having the dog on a long line on a walk, running along and reeling in and out, reeling in and out, reeling in and out. Um, just for God's sake, watch your fingers when you're practicing this stuff, because spaniels will break in and they won't care. Um, it's a difficult one. We could do like a spaniel workshop, really. Ooh. We'll just um, tie it to a small child and we'll sugar. We'll just feed Charlie loads and loads of chocolate, get him run around a long line, um, and then we'll just catch him. They are um, like children on Skittles. Well, Reef is anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, get good about untangling it from trees. Someone just put, um, I've lost my spine a couple of times in woodlands where I attempted to drop and catch a lion and wrap it from the tree and she zooms off quickly to pick it up. The thing with getting stuck on something is the length of the line as you catch it. If you've got, if they've already got eight meters of it, you ain't never going to catch it. I have done the same thing. I have dropped the line. Luckily, my spaniel has got an instant um, drop on command. Um, so he will, as soon as I shout, wait, he will drop to the ground. Um, and I've had to do that, which isn't ideal because he does see that as a bit negative because that's my emergency shit's hit the fan command. So we did, we've had to use that because he could, he would just follow the trail without me. 
So if, I, if I've got enough line, I will drop and catch. And I'm not going to do that if I'm losing more than half the lines, more than five meters, my line's gone. I ain't going to drop and catch because I'll never catch it. Um, if I can't, he's just going to have to wait. I'm going to have to stay, get in slow down, catch the line and carry on and pull it round. That comes down with your spaniel, which we're going to talk on to now actually with environmental corrections and, and corrections by accident, how to get past that. Um, oh, look, two up for a spaniel workshop, Jolene. Yeah. You've opened the uh, the can now, haven't you? Maybe we need to do some Spaniel workshops. Um, the only thing I'm going to talk about, I'll talk about line length and then I'll hand over to you for corrections, Jolene. Um, line length, it could be tempting to give your Spaniel that 10, 15 metres of line, whatever your line length is. It's very hard to get back in and out. I am tempted with a Spaniel to have shorter rather than longer line. It doesn't suit every dog. We've already discussed that. But I will work closer to six metres of line than I would eight metres of line based on the fact of getting that line in at speed and also tangleability. If he hasn't got 10 meters to get in a bush with, um, I'm less likely to lose him in a bush after a scent. Um, so I tend to keep my line probably a little bit shorter than most, unless it's, you know, we've got an open area. Um, I do keep it a bit shorter. But we've worked through him just dragging me along and not worried about me beating up his bum. Whereas other Spaniels are like, oh my God, you're far too close. Go away, get, get away. They're more sensitive. Right, I'm going to hand over to Jolene for corrections what we kind of mean about corrections when we're, we're dealing with long line yeah so, so when we mean corrections we're not talking anything negative we're not so there's most there's a, a very strong chance that you're gonna um get tangled in something and you're gonna jerk the dog at some point you, it's going to happen either they'll pull the line out too too quickly and you'll put your brake on to stop it and they'll have that jerk they'll get wrapped around a tree and we won't be able to get the um we won't be able to get the the line back or get ourselves round to preempt it and they'll have a jerk so when we're talking about corrections that well, that's what we mean so those accidental times that we've caught the line and it's given the dog that pull to give them that cor corrections it, this is going to be part of sort of a spaniel handler but any kind of fast dog any quick working dog um you're going to potentially accidentally correct them um and you need to sort of work with yourself on the things we've talked about with your line length um and making sure you're you're getting good with your line but also the stuff that you can do um with your dog to make sure that they if they do get accidentally checked it's not the end of the world um, and they have to return to your side and they're not going to travel forward so um the reason i want to put this in and we've talked about it is because a lot of the time i'm spending more time doing my line and getting untangled from things than i am being able to read my dog now that might just be my spaniels um river isn't as quick as reef reef is like 100 million miles an hour even when i'm just on a nice slow steady walking pace um but the difference with reef is reef has got no kind of he's got no fear of anything i would say so um if we're going off mind you river hasn't either so if we're going anywhere we, we will be going off a wall or we'll be going over an edge of something or they are like they did they are the dangerous too um that are trails so you want to be able to get your dog um used to potentially getting that line pull there's, there's no way about it um so what you want to look at is you want to look at your equipment first of all so you want to look at that you've got a nice well-fitted sort of man trailing harness you want that nice y shape at the front i know this isn't going to be subjective to all but it is definitely what we advise at man trailing global now where well, it used to be uk um you want to make sure that the dog um isn't going to get hurt for a start or get cause any additional injury by these accident online checks um reef would seriously give himself an injury um if i wasn't if i was slower on my line if that makes sense so for me i've had to really up my game um you want to make sure that you can do all you can with your line and then you want to look at working on the dog pulling in an intensity trail um, and getting used to it outside of potentially man trailing so again we often i often find it a dog that has, has been sort of given a lot of cues and told a lot and being given a lot of things to do that sometimes if they have an accidental line check they think it's the end of the world or maybe we've gone on a walk and i've told my dog it can't move forward it's very sort of 
old school that kind of thing oh I'm going to check them with the but sometimes the dogs can go oh gosh what was that or oh gosh it's not that way so if you look at doing some intensity trails um and potentially they do have a jerk on the line you could just look at sort of going okay not a problem go on work on um yeah Marie said that she's just found she found a short bungee attached to the to her harness for a line really helps it does really help I've got um a bungee on Reef's harness um I don't think I could travel with him at the moment without it um he would really sort of probably give me injury rather than him because he, he's so jerky um I would look at it so that the dog gets used to having the odd intentional intentional sort of jerk on the line like you're going to get used to it sort of praise them if you need to um to go it's okay that's fine you can work on um if you're doing it and it's in the midst of a trail as a handler you need to just sort of be mindful of the direction of the trail going because like I said if the dog deems it as oh I can't go this way I've now got to give another direction the spaniels will make that before you've even got your line untangled um from somewhere they'll make the deci decision to go a di different direction so you want to make sure that your behavior doesn't influence the dog um so that they don't just go oh i've been checked i'm going a different way the other thing you want to do is make sure that you don't just stand there so sometimes we can get in such a fluster with our line handle that handling that we've got so wrapped around that we just sort of stand there and the dog's sort of left there for a few minutes spaniels don't do well with having to wait for anything um and sometimes this can often be at the starts as well um which we discussed before so any kind of weight you just want it to kind of be fluid you want it to sort of be as fluid as you possibly can um and go forward and check them and then just ask them to carry on um the spaniels will be really quick and they can often just turn on a sixpence can't they and they'll be in the opposite direction so doing stuff either outside um of man trailing with the harness on so that occasionally they might get jerked or I'm not telling you to go out and intentionally jerk your dog um what I want you, the dog to do is to sort of go in the context of man trailing I might get round wrapped around this tree they're not going to understand that they've got around this tree they've got wrapped around the tree they're just doing something that's natural for us it's all oh, gosh you've gone around this tree again and I've got four loops wrapped round I'm never going to get this um out so you want the dogs to sort of just go oh okay no problem carry on um and that would be the best that i could look at describing that is there anything you want to add to that catherine no i think that was pretty cool that actually um pretty to the point um yeah i'm trying to just keep it to the point because of the time but also it's just the dogs need to learn that it's just not the end of the world um yeah. but handlers also need to sort of be sort of mindful that if they accidentally get knocked around a tree, tree or even if they get caught on a bush it can pull them off um, and they can go in the opposite direction you just need to go actually I was traveling this to the right I got caught on that tree that's just around that bend my dog then switched to the left I'd be just mindful of that and potentially go actually that was me that line checked them I need to take them back um, and go and carry on down the trail yeah the hand, handler error is the biggest cause of problems with man trailing so it's just remembering did what you do cause a change did you get stuck in a bush and have to stop suddenly make your dog fly to the right is it on scent or is it guessing um right we're almost the end guys and actually we're just going to talk about troubleshooting on the trail but actually a lot of this we've probably already covered um anecdotally um as we worked along so conflict previous trailing from other jobs um we did have a chit chat about it um or just mention it if you've got a dog that does other scent work or it's gun dog or a protection dog or a pet has got high obedience when you come to doing man trailing this can cause conflict because it's quite a free sport um and that's one of the reasons why quite pushy about the ritual and maintaining it it's another reason why you're like we have a man trailing harness and we have a line and we're, we're quite specific about the start of it because we want the dog to go oh in in this context i do this and I'm, a, I'm allowed to drag on the line or um we're not looking for pheasants because i'm focused on this if you don't have that we're in this mode it can cause issues and when we talked about said article and gun dogs picking up um or gun dog trained dog sorry um picking up scent articles this is where the dog doesn't fully understand the game they're playing and will resort back to previous reward history or things they find more rewarding what they're currently doing 
remember man training is very free and it's fun for a dog but it's also dogs making decisions if you've got a dog that's done a lot of training a lot of obedience and you suddenly go yeah do what you want you, you make decisions i'll follow you dog goes i'm sorry what what you just spent the last four years telling me off every time or or training me to focus on you rather every time that i do something slightly dependent and now you want me to do it. And they look at you like you're an idiot. Um, and it means that they can revert back to, and I'm not sure they revert to things that they find comforting or um, good to do. So I think Amy's still on this. So Amy's dog, Hendrix, um, he wouldn't start, pick the scent article up and he'd stand there and go, I'm a gun dog, I retrieve it. And Amy's word, amazing. Like he's, he, she's awesome, he's a, she's a good instructor and he's a cracking dog to get past that. And now he will sniff and carry on the trail. But it was a great conflict at the beginning. He's an excellent man training dog, but the start was becoming difficult because he didn't know whether he wanted to revert to gun dog stuff because it was comforting and that's what he knows how to do or to man trail because it was fun. And then you could see his head go, man trail, take set article with me. But you could see the whole time he had it, he was going, Am I gun dog in or what? Um, and it's difficult. Um, um, sorry, uh, oh, terrible multitasking tonight. You can tell I'm tired. Um, so that previous training, if you've got a dog that's done scent work, absolutely fine. So Sue's just asked, if a dog's done scent work for looking for gun oil, would man try and interfere with this? Nope, does not interfere at all. As long as you get the starts right. What I will see with dogs that don't quite understand man training that do a lot of scent work, they will revert to searching cars in the car park. I've seen that quite a few times. They've done dogs a lot of scent work. It's too hard a trail or the start is difficult or something has made it that the dog's struggling to start. They'll go and search cars. So they'll do the venture, get all harnessed up, set off on the trail, go to the cars and search the cars because they'll go and find the person sent on the car, which is absolutely fine. And then they'll go, oh, person sent here on the car. I know how to do search work. I'm going to look for something else on the car because they want a reward. They found the trail itself too difficult. Um, so I do find that sometimes if, if they've been set up to fail by accident by the environment or whatever factor, they can revert back. Um, but it's you can successfully train most any dog to know the difference between different sports. Like I mantra on my ex security dogs, they are, they're muzzled, um, but they're bike work trained dogs. They were trained to look after me. Um, that was their job was to protect me and my family. And, and when I work sites, I'm over half, but they're man trail, they're not, they're not looking for people to have a go at. On the normal, and when they're at work, yeah, you wouldn't have got within 60 foot of me with the dogs like losing their minds. When we man trail, they're like, oh, I might. Because it's a different context that on a harness, they're in a muzzle, they're working in a different way. They, they aren't looking for trouble because there is no trouble associated with man training. The bike works never associated with it. Whereas um, when they're out on their big flat leather collar, they go, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to bark at everybody and they bark at anybody indiscriminately. It also, people do a lot of tracking and man trailing and they really complement each other. But I would always advise if you want to do tracking, do tracking first. Teach the dog to put his nose down first before you go, hey, it's fine to be free. Um, because what you'll find is man trailing will ruin um, the foundations of tracking and make it harder to start. It won't necessarily ruin the wrong way. It will make it more difficult to start um, because the dog will go, but why do I put my nose on the ground? Not always true, but can, is generally the consensus that I'm seeing. Um, they're the same but different. Tracking is a taught, follow, very specific, whereas man trailing is followed with a, a specific person's scent and very free. Um, <clears throat> with man trailing, they're We've got that start they'll go and do it with tracking they've got a different kind of harness and different kind of start they will track they won't interfere but they will complement each other if you get the starts right um so just watching that conflict and making sure you're not using the same cues all the time and stuff can make a big difference if you do scent work and you use find it to find gun oil don't use find it to find people use yeah trail that's that's the biggest one i find oh, i want to use the same commands the dog doesn't know the difference if you use the same commands I find the handler struggle with it more. I do. So I do scent work and man training with mine. So I find um, the handlers struggle with the different terminology. So as long as you have separate things for different things in scent work, um, I found that a lot of the dogs, especially if pro you've progressed, is that they can get used to searching objects, um, like Catherine said. So hence why they've gone and searched a specific object um, before looking at going to, to follow the human scent that's on the floor. Um, I do, I, for for that i actually think that scent work 
actually complements a man trailing dog. I think it gives you that dog an extra tool um, to put in its toolbox. Um, and if you have ever done scent work with your dog and um, you man trail, um, a lot of scent work dogs really have a really nice behavior when they're working out the proximity alert. So the proximity alert is where the dogs um, hit um, a big plume um, of scent from the missing person that's been there for a while and they know that they're close. Um, so if you ever watch a, a dog doing that does both of those tasks, it's really interesting to watch those dogs um, work the proximity alert into the nispers. Um, it's really good. They really problem solve and they work back to source um, really, really well. So I, I like the two. Um, but it's just making sure that it's, it's clear to the dog. Just have clear expectations for your dog. Um, don't set it so it's hard and the dog's just not able to communicate and doesn't understand what we're asking for it because then it just won't be enjoyable. Yeah. Um, the next thing is no running. Don't run. You'll never keep up. It's not worth it with a spaniel. Just don't do it. I know people are like, oh, it's the only way I can try up. No, you'll get hurt. You'll never keep up. Absolutely never. Um, lean back. Enjoy the ride. My troubleshooting on that one is just lean back. <laughs> pressure in your hips. Lean back. Um, don't try like this. Your arms out. You will die. Arms in. Your centre of gravity is on your hips. Um, and lean back. <laughs> um, yeah, so look for, if you've got a strong spaniel, uh, look for your core strength. Um, if you look at holding your arms out, you're going to be projected and pulled forward, um, and then that will get you into a faster movement. Um, so I would look at um, keeping your line central, um, so that you're using your core strength. I tend to lean back a little bit like a skier would, if that makes sense. If anyone's watched my photos, I look like Mr. Soft because my legs are bending, but my body's angular, if that makes sense. If you are old enough to remember those adverts. Um, for me, it's really easy to try and go faster with your spaniel. And you really have to try and find a speed that works for two of you. Um, and it might take you a while to come to that sort of mutual agreement, I think it should be. Um, think the tortoise and the hare. The hare went really quickly. It didn't, it didn't really get there in the end, did it? The, the slow and steady tortoise did. Um, and I'm one for it anyway. I'm terrible. Jerry always tells me, slow, slow, reef down, slow him down. You can work him slower, you can work him slower. So I, I, I know how easy it is to sort of go quicker. Um, and especially if they get into proximity because you're all excited and you've got the adrenaline buzz as well. You've got that that high. Um, so, yeah, just make sure you just do not run because it's just going to hinder your progress. Do you want to do foundations? Yeah, I'll just read the comments because Amy's actually commented about Hendrix. Um, the only difference since Hendrix trail in, in the shoot season has started, he's much more distracted. Dare I say it, some of the worst um, starts I've seen. Um, and trails and now avoid any cover. So yeah, the dog has gone into his his mode of I'm at work, and it's something he's been trained for prior to man trailing, and something he genetically absolutely adores because it's bred to do. Um, I have seen it with other spaniels that have done more gun dog training. They come to trail and they're just they're struggling because they they're not they're not seeing the difference, or they're trying to use the scent in a weird way. So if something's looking a bit confused. And you're not sure look at what's happening outside of man trailing um kind of very interesting how jesse trails yeah you've got a collie cross spaniel um Mo molly taylor's put i have to lean back hold the loops behind my back and pull yeah lean back put the weight in your hips yeah that's what i stick a loop stick my loops behind my back and i've literally sort of got it like a c around my back um and i go from there um yeah, it just makes it harder to do your line handling get you getting yeah. your line in. um Sue, I'm not sure what you mean um, with a long line attached at the front. Um, you have to explain a bit further because we don't ever attach long lines to the front of the harness. Um, they're designed to pull, which is a kind of harness. I don't know what you mean with that comment because you have to uh, write it out. Um, I'll just go into foundations and I'll wait to see your comment is. It's easy to skip foundation spaniel. Actually, it tends to be what most people do is they're really good at it and you want to progress them to slow them down because people are like, oh, I'll get on to hard starts, the dog slows down. And it does. And it all falls apart when you start to get um, single blinds and double blinds. 
the second you as a handler don't know what's going on completely falls apart um that's coming from personally me I, I've, I've gone through that I have um really ruined my relationship with my spaniel by not knowing what's going on that would help him because I I didn't understand him because I pushed him too hard in some things um well actually it was my first spring at um, Nessa that I trailed with rather than captain and I say him it's her I was learning and I I made the mistakes with her and it took me time to rectify it I haven't made them so much with captain and I won't make them with my puppy um because I'm gonna hammer foundations till it's going out of fashion don't skip them because it's easier for you it's not going to be easy long term when you go I can't read my spaniel I don't understand they're swinging around the end of the line like a headless chicken and I get all these from owners of the spaniel and it's being negative and there's nothing wrong with what your dog's doing your dog's trying to interpret what the hell's going on and trying to communicate back to you um reinforce the nations if you can't read your negatives on the blue light if you're doing trails where you know the trailers and you don't know what your dog's nail negatives are you've got no business doing single blinds or double blinds because if you can't communicate that to me why are you making it harder where the dog's got more potential to make a mistake you've got huge potential to make a mistake and we're likely to reinforce the wrong behavior like crittering like going off the trail like doing different things um so make sure you're doing I'm not necessarily mean doing loads of hunt trails and intensity trails, but just doing delayed and sent article in environments that your dog can work in, in rural that's not too crittery, in high critical contamination, in urban. Get all that really good and understand your dog before you go and two hour age double blinds because you will fall flat on your face. Because when that dog goes, I don't know what to do, and starts casting around like an idiot, and you're frustrated because you don't know if it's on or off the trail and actually lost the trail 400 meters of tray you're not going to recover from that and you're going to have a huge negative and a big dip. We talked a lot about this in, um, uh, me and Jolene did a webinar on plateaus and when you're reaching a point in, in your training where things are going a little bit wrong. Um, it, it's important that you set yourself up for success and it's important that foundations are really good. Um, and it's probably worth it if you're not sure watching that webinar and just kind of going through the process in your brain because man trailing is 50% dog and it's 50% you. Um, and you have to be able to um, read your dog before you progress. It's important. Um, um, oh, Sue, I know what you mean. Um, sorry, that's the first thing anyway, foundations. Um, no, we never have the dog completely attached to us because if the dog runs and you go down, you're going to get dragged and hurt. So we aren't doing canny cross, we're not doing it at speed. We have the dogs on a line. Um, sorry, I must have got confused before. Um, no, we don't have the dog ever attached to us. It's a safety thing. If there's an emergency, we need to be able to disengage that dog from you. Um, if you're struggling with line handling, we will double line the dog and put a second long line on. It's not something we do an awful lot, but it is the option for it. If your dog's that strong, you need to work with your instructor to work through that to help slow the dog down. But no, we never ever have the dog attached. You've got the dog at 10 meters a line. Um, so what's going to happen is that dog gets full 10 meters and pulls you by the hips at speed. We're going to end up with broken bones somewhere. Um, it's convenient and I can see why people want to do it, but it's, it's too much of a health and safety hazard, especially when you get tangled around bushes and things and if you trail a spaniel. Um, but no, but I, I know what you mean. Kind of safety sort of measure that you would think that that would be, but to be perfectly honest, there's so many ways that you could cause an injury via that. Um, all is just work with your instructor um, and if you are worried, like I said, double line, like Catherine said, which is the instructor has a line on and you have a line on, um, but it's predominantly you that is going to be working the line in and out. The instructor's just there as an additional tether, um, a bit like um, when the children go out with the dogs on the canny cross. Obviously, they're attached to the dogs, but it's the humans that take the slack. Um, so it's a bit like that, but they're not attached. And then also just if you never get into the position where you're practicing your line handling on a regular occurrence it, it needs to be muscle memory um the the rate that you need to be able to get it in and get it out for safety reasons because a it'll either go under your dog you'll get tangled you'll have to stop it'll go around you go under your legs through the instructor etc the more you practice it the better you're going to be at it if you don't practice it and come up with sort of other ways of doing it you're never going to practice it so you'll never get better at it so although this seems like a, a safety solution it's just sort of prolonging where you need to get to, if that makes sense. So, um, Good question. yeah. 
Right. Um, we're essentially at the end, guys. Have we got any questions so far? Have we got any further questions? Are you all fed up of seeing our faces now? I would like to go to bed um, because you have coped through on almost three hours of. <gasps> we should have done it in two two things. I didn't think it would actually go on this long, but because um, it's only like seven or eight slides, but actually those slides broke down into five or six things on each one. Um, um, Lindsay Spaniel training. <laughs> Well, Jolene, maybe we could turn that date we're doing into a Spaniel trailing day. That sounds like a plan. Should we do that then? We do that. Right, yeah. I'm just going to um, bob on the last slide, guys. Um, I promise you it, it's worth it. <laughs> um, sorry, we jumped through a few just to get stuff done. Um, yeah. Just, to be fair, guys, there's so much more that we could have gone into, and we even thought that this was condensed. Um, but you can see the fact that we've gone through it. You just open sort of more and more topics. Um, and me and Catherine like to, to chat and discuss stuff that we're passionate about. So, um, like I said, Catherine's got more experience with Spaniels than I have. Um, my two guys, are, are, they're only two and 18 months now. Um, oh, it feels like forever, though, doesn't it? Just take oh us God, that, guys. That's all our details. So if you need to find us, that's us. Um, I'm gonna jump on the main bit now. I get this chat up. Um, so what we also wanted to say to you guys is that um, we're here if you need us. Ask, ask us questions. Send us videos. Um, we're here to help with everybody's man trailing. Um, this was kind of put together because we were getting asked a lot, and why not put the information on the internet? It's um, um it's when there's the information there the more we can share it the better and even if you like yeah i know that and you thought oh god you're talking absolute rubbish for three hours um you might have taken something away and that's fine hopefully you didn't think we were talking rubbish for three hours and i can see people are like yeah bye 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 because <laughs> you're knackered um we will just say we are releasing some different um dates and stuff in the next couple of months um and there's going to be some cool stuff going on um, Jolene, I don't know if you want to start with the dates that you're going to release um, the weekends. So it's worth hanging around. We will put these dates on our pages though as well. Yes, yeah, so just give us two seconds, guys, if anyone's interested. So um, for my guys, I know that the heads are all doing a lot of weekends, but I know that um, for some reasons people can't travel. Um, so I'm doing some weekenders. So there will be an evening of theory online theory and then you'll have two days of trailing um i'm going to do the 15th and 16th of april in birmingham the 24th and 25th of june in staffordshire and then the 30th and the 1st of october in warwickshire now um it's easier for me to probably travel around it's not a million miles from home but that should make the weekenders or something they're not sort of based on any weekenders it's me just wanting to do a big blast two days of trails you'll make really great progress in them um, it's £175 a team with a £75 deposit. So if you want to get involved in that, just drop me a message um, on the Carter's Pet Services page or the email. Then, Catherine, you've got your seminar. Yeah, so at the end of January, 22nd, or the end of the 22nd of January, I've got a seminar of geekery in North Wales in Wrexham. Um, I'm doing an in-person one with um, sandwiches and bits and bobs on man trailing theory and scent theory on stuff with, with the most up-to-date stuff we're dealing with at the moment to hopefully help handlers in understand how their dogs working a little bit um it's something i'm really passionate about and um it's hard work when we're actually man trailing to go for information we haven't always got an extra hour afterwards to talk about scent so doing a seminar on it it will be recorded and there's potential that i will do it elsewhere if it goes well i just need to do it first guys um but if you um um want to um jump on that those dates are on my website um on there um we i've also got my weekend with jerry moss down in bedford a uh, midweeker which is the 7th till 9th of june um so a few spaces that's over on jerry's page on jerry um jk9 j j a y k9 um and they're good fun and even if you can't get on my weekend with jerry definitely get one jolene's weekend as i'm booking one of hers as well so um i'm just gonna come be a punter and you can pick on me uh, <laughs> all you want um, line. yeah <laughs> move line. Get, get control of that spaniel woman what do you do with that puppy um um so <laughs> 
this um definitely some fun but we put some dates all the time so it's worth seeing it um we are going to do uh we're doing some collaboration together in february which are on a website so there's a waiting list um that's actually full but there is a waiting list um but we are going to do what well, it was going to be an advanced special in tamworth on the 30th of april but i think it's going to have to be a spaniel special um, I think it'll be the 30th of April in Tamworth, so it's a bit more central. I'll be travelling over to Jolene, um, and that's £80 per person, and we will make it a Spaniel training day now. Um, we were going to do urban. It'll probably still be an urban setting, um, but when we do collaborations, you get the opportunity to trail with both of us. Um, so you'll get like an AM with me and a PM with um, Jolene, and we do it together. Um, I'm laughing because I'm already getting messages to go on the Spaniel waiting list. <laughs> Jolene's like, no, 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 no. So yeah, message one of us. Um, we will sort out the booking. Um, it was something we chatted about and we only confirmed the date this morning. So um, we haven't got anything booked, but uh, everything with date wise will pop on our pages either tonight or tomorrow. Um, so if anyone's interested in anything, then definitely um, have a, a gander at our pages. Mine's uh, trailing canines and Jolene's Carter's pet services. Um, and we're both a bit of fun. I'm just actually going to stop recording now because I don't think this needs to be on the recording.